Welcome back to another episode. I am Sticks. This is my best friend and co-host D-Lo, and we are Too Complex. I don't know if y'all seen what's been going on for the first week of 2024, but we got some spicy content for you today. But before we get into it, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thank y'all for getting us over 500. Finally, we are on the road to 600 now, so hit that subscribe button if you're new. And also hit that notification bell so you miss none of these bangers that we drop yes, every single week, man. D low the the first week of 2024, man. How's it been treating you, bro? It's been treating me good, other than getting over this illness um, mm-hmm. and going back to work. So I don't know if a lot of people know, but my wife is half Haitian. Um, couldn't tell by looking at her, you you wouldn't suspect that she's half Asian. Ha- Haitian, not Gee. Asian. <laughs> the re- I'll tell you the reason I said Asian in a minute. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or later on in the, in the episode. But um, she's half Haitian. So we had soup jumeau. Soup is, jumeau, um, okay. Yeah, which is a Haitian tradition. So the first year of, the first day of the year is also Haitian Independence Day. And so... How they celebrate their independence is they have this traditional meal, soup jumeau, you know, in black culture or in the South. I don't know if it's the black culture or South. You usually have collard greens, black eyed black peas, eyed peas and, yep. uh, cornbread, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the the tradition for first year. Well, Haitian culture, you have this soup jumeau and um, it was really good. <laughs> really, really good. I, okay, I enjoy I, it. Um, okay. And she, so it was her first time making it. And she didn't make it the traditional way. She took the, the the quick way, but it still was good to me. And she called her aunt and was like, uh, you know, she was giving her pointers and her aunt was impressed. But she was like, yeah, but we got to come down there so you can we can taste what it really is supposed to taste like. So I'm excited to go down to when y'all Miami going down there. To, um, it's got go it's got to be on a new year. So, OK. So oh, that's right. That's I don't right, know. That's it right. might yeah, be yeah. next year. Whenever we go, we're going we gonna to try it out. <laughs> But yeah, the soup jumeau uh, had that. It was good. Um, also, went back to work, and I I now realize why I rarely take vacations because you need a vacation from a vacation when you go back to work. It's like <laughs> it's terrible getting back into the swing of shit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just I, I don't know, man. You know, I'm not, I'm not lazy, but it's just it's tough to get yourself going and to to do everything that you were doing before you left. Mm-hmm. And you know, do it as smoothly as possible. So, yeah. Other than that, though, you know, the week, the week was good. I enjoyed the the first of the year with the family. We didn't do anything. We didn't go out. We didn't. Uh, we just sat in the house and enjoyed each other's company as always. And then, like I said, on the d- day of New Year's, we had the soup jumo, which I enjoyed mm-hmm. thoroughly. Mm-hmm. What about you? How was the first week of the New Year for you? How was your New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, so on and so forth? Everything was cool with did you me, do man. Anything fun, did I, you, man. Did you... you know, listen, man. Me, me, and Sam kind of just chilled out. Um, we, we, we have our little thing that we do. We don't. We not. I'm not really a go out type of guy. I'm same, same as you. Just I, I would much rather be at home chilling. So me and Sam grabbed some, uh, some Welch's sparkling grape juice. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We watched the ball drop in Times Square. We clinked our glasses. Happy New Year. Gave each other a hug, and we went back to watching some anime. <laughs> so that's what that's yeah. what we did. That's what we did. But now nah, Christmas was great. Uh, she was she was with her mom for the Christmas holiday. She was with me for the New Year. So after Christmas, she came over here. She came over here for like a week and a half, and we just kind of chilled out. I did my sec the second part of Christmas for her. Just took her on a shopping spree. Got her a couple of things that she wanted that she mentioned that she wanted, and kind of kept it kind of low key. Um, as y'all know, man, the holidays are a little different for me now since I'm so far away from actually f- actual family and friends. So it's a little bit different for me. It's just more spent with my daughter because that's the reason mm-hmm. why I moved 3,000 miles away and drove cross country was for her. So most of the time it's just spent with her. Um, but I mean, everything was cool. Getting back into the new year with work is kind of the same as it was before I left because I'm just, I'm new to this industry. So I'm just trying to get my clientele up and get into the process of how the new company does things as far as sales and insurance and stuff like that. So it's, 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 it's a grind for me right now. Cause I'm still technically new. I've only been with the company for three months. So it's technically new. So I'm just grinding it out. Uh, but other than that, everything was cool, man. The, the new year was great. I, and I, t- I thoroughly enjoyed myself, thoroughly enjoyed myself. That's what's year. up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what's up. Oh man. But, um, one person that's been causing a lot of stir to start off the new year, 
technically on the third day of the new year, Cat third Williams day, went yeah. on Club Shay Shay and went on a I'm gonna call it a rampage, just talking about all of the um all of the the original people who garnered them as the kings of comedy and some new guys and people who he's worked with as far as comedians and things like that. Just letting the, letting Club Shay Shay and the world know like they're liars and they're thieves, basically. So for all mm-hmm. of y'all that don't know, and I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all do, um, Cat Williams was calling everybody out. He talked about Cedric the Entertainer. He talked about Steve Harvey. He talked about Michael Blackson, Kevin Hart. He talked about Ludacris, a lot of different people, man. So, how did Ludacris get it straight? I understand. I understand. Like, I understand. Did you heard the Shannon story though? Sharp Unk asked him the question, but like, really? Like, that's how you had to go. I mean, come on. But bro. you heard. But you heard the story that he told about Ludacris. So, Ludacris basically, and, and I can. Ludacris is one of those stories that I was like, okay, that's you know, that's he say she say that might not be true. I can believe him a lot about what he says about the comics, but the one about Ludacris mm-hmm. was kind of kind of off putting to me because he said it was a Illuminati meeting, <laughs> like, and yeah. he one of them had to cut the hair off and the jagged sideburns, and they would get a twenty, they would get you know fifty million dollars in or or a, a bunch of money. I don't 200 know, two hundred million dollars, two hundred million dollars in a twenty in a twenty movie contract. If they did some things and he said he had to keep his virgin, you know, virgin hole intact to right. not take that money in that 20 movie deal. But yeah. apparently Ludacris took it. And then he made the right. comment of, well, what what number is Fast and Furious on? OK. Yeah. And so it was like that when I was like, eh, that's, you know, that's that's kind of off put. But the ones about the comedians. That was the one that I was like, yo, he he owned this something. What you think about what Cat Williams said in this in this interview, bro? I mean, my thing is it's a couple ways that you can take it, right? Mm-hmm. So you can you can you can say, okay, cat's up there telling nothing but the truth. Mm-hmm. You can say cat's up there telling nothing but lies, or you can say cat is trying to stir up some controversy to to move the needle for his his turn tour. You mm-hmm. can look at all those ways. Mm-hmm. Um, the I, I so I've never really known Cat Williams in the interviews that he's done because he he doesn't do a lot of interviews mm-hmm. that that I know of, but I I've never known him to lie or to be a liar. Mm-hmm. Um, it's but it's it just it makes you wonder what place he's coming from. When he's talking about individuals in his industry that other than Ricky Smiley, who sat on that same couch that he sat on, and Cedric the Entertainer, who sat on that same couch he sat on when he was talking to Unk, Unk at Club Shay Shay. Mm-hmm. Other than those two, nobody's really talked about Cat directly mm-hmm. in four or five years, I want to say. I don't know when. Whenever Kevin, When was Kevin Hart on The Breakfast Club and he did that? That was two. That was like two years talking. ago when he, with him and Kim, when him and Kimberly, when him, T- Kimberly, when him and Tiffany Haddish was on there at the same time. I think that was like two years ago. Yeah, I think it was like two years yeah. ago. Okay, so two years ago, and so I guess it, okay. So then you can add Kevin in that spat that he had there. But he, I mean, he literally talked about everybody. And I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a bit from from his one of his comedy shows. When I say he talked about everybody, he talked about Everybody and everything, 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 and everybody. Everything. I mean, he talked about everybody. He, he talked did. about Jonathan Majors. He talked about Kanye and Kim Kardashian. Mm-hmm. He talked about Jesse Smollett. Mm-hmm. He talked about Ludacris. It's like, dang, bro, you, you got a problem with everybody? And it, I mean, so it, it is. So I say all that. To say I don't know or have never known Cat Williams to be a liar, but when he talks about individuals that seem to have a perceived higher status than him even in his industry and just throughout entertainment in general it can seem like he's coming from a place of malice Mm -hmm. now i do know that he's a very smart individual Mm -hmm. you can tell that in his comedy as well and so he may know a lot of things and 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 probably has kept all of that in inside and you know as personal knowledge up until this point and then this one thing that he said in the interview as well, he says 2000, 2024 will be the year that everybody, all the lies are exposed. Mm-hmm. So is he the messenger or is he 
just the person because he also says something else that all all division divides or is he just the person that's going to divide us or divide the entertainment industry i mean it's just it's just a lot it's a bunch of different ways a lot of emotions a lot of thought that needs to go into this meeting or not meeting this interview when you watch it you probably have to watch it a couple of times i got to go back and watch it again and see what i miss it was just shocking like dang this man is really talking about Everybody and he as soon I know I'm going on long here. No, you go, as you go, soon as the interview started, he went in like, "All right, cat. <laughs> Let me tell you about this person." Let me. I'm like, "Dang, what?" Yeah, he was going. He was going crazy, and it, I was I was watching um the interview after that that uh, that uh that Unc did with Gilbert Arenas, and he was like. If if I let everybody else tell it, we should have been recorded before he walked in because he was on ten when he first walked in that motherfucker. Yeah. So so, but to to take to take what to take what you what you said, the three things that you said, you say you can either be he's telling the truth or he's lying or he's promoting his his uh his 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 next tour that he's got his twenty his his one hundred city tour that he's about to do his twentieth one hundred city tour. No, he's on, he's doing it right now. Or he's he's on okay he's touring right now. So he's either doing it. For good, bad, or promotion, I'm all uh, so. I went through and this this was the one that I researched the most as far as the topics that we're talking about today. This is the one I researched the most because the rest of them I have a pretty I have a pretty good knowledge about. But this one right here, I had to actually look into. And yeah. when it comes to the the comedians that he called out, the Steve Harveys, the Michael Blacksons, the Cedric Entertainers, the Kevin Hart, the Tiffany Haddishes, you know, the Faison loves that he talked about. He talked about all of these people. Mm-hmm. I can see why he says that they're all because he because he, he made a comment. And he was like, why do liars lie? Nobody knows why liars lie. They just lie. Like liars are just liars. Nobody can explain why they do what they do. And mm-hmm. he went on and talked about how all of these these comedians steal material. And he says that they're all just in, they're not writers and that, and and it, and it took me and it made me think about and i think you know this one of my favorite tv shows of all time is seinfeld seinfeld mm-hmm. is one of my favorite tv shows of all time and a lot of my a lot of my black friends clown me for it because they don't understand why i like that kind of humor but it's a to me it's a funny ass show and the thing that i res- respected about seinfeld is that he wrote his 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 jokes he literally mm-hmm. wrote his jokes. He was a writer before he was a comedian. And he and the thing about the craft is that you write a joke and you craft it as you go along. The more you tell that joke, the more it evolves and the better it gets. And it was even times in that in that show in this, in Seinfeld where he would literally show himself waking up out of his sleep. Like, damn, let me write that down. I think that'd be funny. Like, because he they're writers. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, and and he was going on and on about how Steve Harvey, Cedric Entertainer, they're not writers. They're entertainers. That's why Cedric's name is Cedric the Entertainer because he entertains people. And he, it was, and as I was I researching- mean, even in that though, he he said something about, and not to take you off your, 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 your box right there, but um, even in that though, he said that Cedric the Entertainer, when his name is Entertainer, that means he's supposed to be able to sing, dance, tell jokes he can't mm-hmm. sing he can't dance and he doesn't have uh any net he doesn't have any specials on netflix or tubi so i mean mm-hmm. but yeah i mean cedric but, does have a but a he is on tubi he, i mean on netflix he he had one but is it still on there because i remember it was there like maybe four or five years ago i don't even know if it's there no more i didn't i didn't look at, into that part but I mean, he had it though yeah well, true but th- that goes back to the point that that cat william said was like i have 12 does he? Yeah, he said he's had twelve Netflix oh. specials. And he's still he's still on contract he's right had. now. Eight. That's eight, what I'm saying. He's ten had. figure contracts. Yeah, yeah. He's had. He's had. Okay. So well, if that's the case, then so the Nintendo had one that we can that's even what remember. I'm yeah, you know what I'm saying. But still, but then Faze on Love it. says it's easy to get Netflix deals, and he ain't even got one. You see I, what I'm I, saying? I, but is he even really even acting anymore? So I mean, it's like, but he's supposed to be like, a comic. It's stand up comedy, right? I mean, shit. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you, I mean, we were we were once football players. Are we are we not football players anymore? No, we're not. But we did play football. Yeah. But if you're if you claim to be a stand up comic and you don't have one stand up comedy show, 
that anybody can think of, then are you really a stand up comic? We actually were on the field. I don't, I'm not. I'm not defending these guys. Oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. I'm saying like this is this is why I'm saying like it's either he's telling the truth, he's lying, or he's promoting. I don't know which one it is because if you dig a little deep, like a lot of what he said, there's absolutely truth. But then in mm. some of it, he stretched a bit, which technically that's a lie. What, what did he stretch? He said what you just said. Cedric Entertainer does not have. Uh, didn't have any specials on Netflix. He said he's had Cedric, one. Cedric Entertainer doesn't have one that you can find still on Netflix or two. Mm, I don't think that's what he said. Okay, but yeah. I, I don't. I don't know for sure. Yeah, he said you can't find one of Cedric Entertainer's st- uh, specials on Netflix or Tubi. But either way, either way, well, that's neither here nor yeah, there. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, to yeah, get yeah. to the po- to get back to the point of stealing the jokes, I went. I was as I was researching deeper. The one about such an entertainer and the, the 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 car with the loud music joke that he says that Cat Cat Williams says that such an entertainer stole from him. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a, it has a lot to do with what Delon spoke about a couple of times in, in a few episodes back about intellectual property and being mm-hmm. able to protect your intellectual property. For someone to steal a joke, and it don't matter how much you change that joke. If you stole that joke from somebody, you at least have to be able to credit somebody for that joke because rappers have it in there. Rap- rappers have avenues to where they can sue people for using their intellectual property. Actors, photographers, they have ways that they can sue people for using their intellectual property or what, what they what they say is theirs, right? But comedians don't have that. They don't seem to have that avenue, right? So this, so he's coming out and talking about how Cedric stole his joke. How Steve Harvey stole so many people's jokes and stole uh, Mark Curry's whole Mark Curry. um, stole Mark Curry's whole show from hanging with Mr. Cooper to to the Steve Harvey show when he was a principal and Mark Curry was a coach. It was like, bro, like it's 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 one of those things where it's like, okay, cat, why are you saying all of these things? But he he came he f- to start off the actual interview. He said, "I'm coming here to set the record straight because you had three comedians here that told you things about me that were blatant lies, and I need to tell you what the truth is." You know what I'm saying? And just Did like, Steve Harvey actually talk about him though. I didn't see Steve Harvey's interview, so I'm not sure. I don't think Steve Harvey's. If Steve Harvey says something about him, I don't recall that. I know for sure that Cedric the Entertainer, because mm-hmm. Cedric Entertainer talked he was about asked him. That, he and, was asked that question, um, yeah. And Ricky Smiley talked about him because, yeah, because Unc asked him that question, but then uh, asked Cedric the Entertainer the question about stealing the joke. Mm-hmm. But then also Ricky Smiley freely gave up that he was supposed, supposed to, to be, be Money, Money Mike, Mike. Which, which Ice Cube has set that record straight. You said they 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 both they both uh, auditioned for it, but they yeah they everybody thought, they, thought they had a Mike ton did. of comedians yeah. audition for Money Mike. Mm-hmm. So, but then at and and he probably was supposed they envisioned that he was going to be good for it, but they you know, thought and when he was actually be interviewed, he realized he was probably going to be a better Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw that too. And it, but see, the thing is, is that so many there's so many. Um, videos and interviews and and articles out there that support what cat williams is saying which is the crazy part Mm -hmm. because when i was researching a lot of things it was like damn he did steal mark curry's uh content he did steal his jokes and his show damn he did take his joke and instead of the tenor did take his joke and change it up and make it his closing joke and then you look at you know the the whole thing with ricky smiley and it's like damn that he, I haven't seen a movie with Ricky Smiley where he wasn't in a dress and a wig, dressed up like a woman. Mm-hmm. Damn, Kevin, are you right, Kevin Hart? You know what I'm saying? So it's like he he really came up here and talked about everybody. And the one thing that I was, and I pass it back to you. The one thing that that that, that I was talking to, my, and I, I I talked to my gamer homies, you know, what I'm saying uh, every once in a while about different things that we're gonna talk about on the podcast. And the thing that I told them was, if a lot of these things weren't true then number one, they would have facts to debunk them, which I haven't seen it yet. And it's been Wednesday, so it's only Saturday, so we'll see. But they would they would either have they would either come out with facts to debunk what he's saying, or if they did, and they would come with the same energy that Cat that, that Williams came on that show. Because a lot of them, even though they are putting out statements, it's like solemn and like, uh, he's just looking for attention and don't believe the hype or yada yada yada, but they're not 
giving factual information to where to where it's not true. And they're not actually not on the same energy that Cat, Cat Williams came with. Now, and he also, you know, of course, Cat Williams is drinking, but he was like, I'm not fueled by alcohol. I've had less than you. I'm in my clear mind. They want to make me out to be the bad person because I won't do the things in Hollywood that they'll do for the money type shit. And it's like he all of these tours that he's done, he's funded himself. He owns his own intellectual property. He hasn't. It's a lot of things that kept that Cat Williams have done differently that is away from the industry. And that's why he's saying that he doesn't get a lot of the breaks and trying to make him seem like the bad person that he's that he's not. He's never been on a hard drug in his life. He said he smoked weed and smoked cigarettes. That's it. He's never done any hard drug in his life. A single father of seven kids. Like he's he's adopted most of those children. So it's like, bro, like. I don't see any reason why Cat Williams would have to lie, but it, he went ham, bro. <laughs> went yeah, no, crazy. No, no. So I know the stance that I've taken so far, or that I've seemed to take so far, is mm-hmm. against Cat Williams. That's that's not the stance that I'm taking. Um, I do believe that there is a ton of truth in what he he said. He went on Unk's show and said, "I believe that there." We we talk about it all the time. We know that there is a dark side, a weird side to Hollywood. Hollywood where people yeah. do mm-hmm. things that you know you typically wouldn't do. Sell your soul, so to speak. So we talked about selling your soul mm-hmm. and the many different things of what selling your soul is. Mm-hmm. And so um, we we know that people do it, get themselves involved in that type of activity so that they can elevate and get the type of money that we all talk about um, or the type of fame that we all talk about it. My question is other than the three mm-hmm. that you mentioned or that has been mentioned, Cedric, the entertainer, um, Ricky Smiley, Steve Harvey, Steve because Har- yeah. Steve Harvey, because he said that he, Steve Harvey disrespected Bernie Mac, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Ricky mm-hmm. Smiley. So four actually. Mm-hmm. So Cedric, entertainer, Steve Harvey, Ricky Smiley and um, Kevin Hart. Mm-hmm. Other than those four, why did he have to talk about everybody else? Well, why did he have to involve everybody else because, in, in it? Um, because Phase on Love came out, and the reason why he's sitting about Phase on Love is because Phase on Love made that statement that it was easy to get a um, a Netflix special. It was easy to get a Netflix special. That's why he says something about Phase on. Of course, Phase on doesn't have one. He has twelve. Mm-hmm. Um, and still has a Netflix special contract now. The thing about Luda was, um, it was kind of it was kind of off putting, but just like I was saying, just like I was, it was kind of like uh, you can't really. But we watched the Ludacris in real time go from Afro the size of Jumanji to a shortcut with no beard. We watched him in real time go to, go from. Yeah, move, but, I mean, bitch, get out the way to fucking Fast and Furious with no braids, no fro, no beard. We saw it, and I was like, oh. "Braids in Fast and Furious." But we, we, but we saw him. We literally saw him in real time cut his hair off and cut his beard off. Because what he said, what he's yes, we literally saw him go to a low cut with no beard. With, with what I got, I, I understand. We literally saw that. Him. I understand that, and, and I'm not saying again. I'm not saying what Cat Williams implied. That's the, that, that's, true, the, that's the only story that I was like, uh, I can't, that's, you know, that's, I'm going to take the, that with, but, you know, with a grain of salt. Question, so the reason I'm, I'm rebutting or refuting kind of what you're saying is, you know, when Ludacris had the fro, the braids and the, 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 the sideburns, the crazy sideburn the beard, yeah. with all that uh, designs and stuff, he was young. That was also the thing back then. And then that shit went away like mm-hmm. it was a while other than Kawhi Leonard and, and a couple individuals that niggas was wearing braids mm-hmm. everybody cut their hair everybody did that we get older we mature that's just a part of life and now now braids are coming back so you start to see more people wearing braids and whatnot so I mean I, I understand what you're saying but it's also if if that if that was a part of his deal with the Illuminati, as Cat William implied, then that was a, a great thing that uh, that was a great deal that the Illuminati put to hide in front of us. Because literally everybody during that time that had braids and whatnot cut their cut their braids. Bow Wow cut his braids. Uh, Omarion cut his braids. I mean, everybody in the entertainment industry around that time started cutting their hair off. Mm hmm. So that, no, that's I, no, I get it. No, I get it, and I and and I, I I tend to agree with you. I tend to agree with you. It's just you know it's one of those things where it's like, well, damn, like 
he might have some, it might be some truth to what he's saying, but I don't know. I mean, but that, that was the only one, but it, it, it was like, yeah, the ludicrous thing is kind of, it's kind of iffy, but we actually saw the, pro- the progression of what he was saying, but just like you said, everybody was doing it, but I don't know, man. And then, um, of course, Tiffany had his called, called astray phase on love called astray. Um, it was just, it was a lot of different people that that caught Jonathan Diddy, Majors, Jonathan called Majors called a stray. Diddy called a Diddy stray. Diddy called a stray. Uh, fucking, it was it was a lot of people. Like Michael Blackson was in there catching strays and talking about how he told him to stop wearing the dirty dashikis and put on some fly clothes and go build build a build a school in Africa. And stop using the accent. And stop using I've the never accent. Heard, I've never heard Michael Blackson. And, and again, we don't know these people personally. Mm-hmm. We only know them entertainment wise. Yeah. I've never heard Michael Blackson use anything other, other than, than African the African accent. accent. Yeah. And multiple people have said, I've never heard him use anything other than African accent. So, exactly. Exactly. Tyler Perry know. caught a stray. Like, you know, yeah. as far as, you know, dr- same thing Ricky Smiley said. Dress about Ricky Smiley wearing the dress, playing a woman. That's that's the best role that they can play because they play women better than they play men. And whenever you, uh, uh, I mean, that's a matter of opinion. It is, it is a matter of opinion. But if you if, if you look at if you look at Tyler Perry though, his star is Medea. Anytime that mm-hmm. he plays another role, the role of a man, it just don't seem right. It that is my well, but that, that is like you said it's a matter know, of opinion. That's what we know him as. That's where he made his brand from. Is is Medea? But he was he, playing. But that he, that that he was playing that role even before he took it to the to the to the big screen. Exactly. He was playing he it in the plays the too. Circuit he went to the Medea. chitlin circuit. I mean, yeah. That's how he. That's how he started making movies because Medea the play was doing so well mm-hmm. that he moved into making movies based on Medea and mm-hmm. the crowd that he created in the chitlin circuit was drawn to the movies and then it just expanded from there. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying any of this is right. Right. I'm not saying that, um, wearing a dress is the right thing to do to become a star. And that, that is not what the, the, the stereotype for how you cross over and become the, the star that you, you, most people want to become for black actors. Mm-hmm. Um, but some individuals, I don't even know how to I don't even know how to word this. Some individuals, that's how they made their brand. Um, and so because they made their brand like that, the people like Tyler Perry, the people like Ricky Smiley, um, who, you know, they've been doing it from the beginning, for them to continue to do it, I, I just I don't I don't think you we can see them any other way because that's what we we know them as before they blew up. Now these individuals that he's talking about. I don't recall Kevin Hart uh, having any homosexual roles um, in any movie that he's been in. Not fully um, homosexual. He said there was there were scenes that came across as homosexual. It was an actual full role of homosexuality. It was something in the movie that he didn't agree with that he wanted to rewrite. And they were like, okay, cool. But then they went and gave it to Kevin Hart and he did it exactly how they planned it out type of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. But I mean, um, it, but you know, the, the other he, Martin Lawrence Carter. I, I was just about to say Martin, Martin Lawrence Carter straight for Big Mama's yeah, house. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know, man. And I know I'm, I'm fumbling with this just because it, it's so conflicting. You know, again, you don't know if he's really telling the truth. You don't know if he's lying. You don't know if he's just using this for pub, but everybody is talking about this because he went nuclear. Um, on he went deaf. What, 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 uh, uh, what Kanye said, he went deaf. <laughs> I mean, he, <laughs> he, he went, crazy. went all in. He did from bro. from from point zero 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 to point two hours forty six minutes and forty seven seconds. He was going it. off, and it was like, but that, that, that's that's the thing though. Like a lot of a lot of it is the the uh, is a lot of it can be truth. A lot of it, some of it can be speculation. The one the thing the thing that I do kind of believe in was the one that's up the stuff that he was saying about the comedians I can I can see you know what I'm saying but yeah, you can see that yeah because because I I've been why I, I like I said I did a lot of research and there's a lot of um reaction channels of comics that I actually watch and a lot of it is like dude like you you literally have to protect like people steal jokes every single day and regardless of how you put it in context or how the person that stole it put it in context it's still your joke they still right. stole your joke. So I mean, and it, it 
from the from the Steve Harvey to the Century the Entertainers, they stole the jokes and they they stole right. Steve Harvey stealing whole ideas and whole material for shows and everything like that's insane. So I mean that, that I'll say this though. Stealing a whole idea for a show. Hanging with Mr. Cooper was a great show. It was a really great show. So was so was the Steve Harvey show. Steve Harvey show was still was great too. And I don't think that that particular because he said he stole his whole show. Mm-hmm. I don't think Steve Harvey stole that show. I I just think you know they created a show like it, it did Steve Harvey didn't write the Steve Harvey show, did he? I would have to look it up and see. I'm gonna check it. I'm yeah, I don't think he wrote that show. I don't think he directed or produced that show. So that that there, you know, while the shows were similar, I don't think you can pin that directly on Steve Harvey. Now, still in the jokes, I saw the joke that he stole, um, and I saw how upset Mark Curry was about that. And mm-hmm. Mark Curry was upset about stealing the joke. He didn't say anything about stealing the show, but the joke, he was upset. And he said he addressed Steve Harvey about it. Mm-hmm. Well, so from what I'm seeing is the Steve Harvey show was created by a Golden Girls writer. Writer Win- Winifred Harvey got, oh, Winifred is a woman's name? That's crazy. Win- <laughs> creator Winifred H- Harvey got her start on Rhoda and wrote episodes for Laverne and Shirley, Monk, Mindy, Benson, the new odd couple, the Cosby show before becoming an Emmy writing, Emmy winning writer producer for the golden girls. So yep. it was written by somebody else. Um, says the series, the series pay homage to TV stars of the nineties. Saturday night live cast member was a recurring role. So it was a lot of different things about it, but it was not written by Steve Hardy Harvey, but it was produced by Steve Harvey. Okay. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, again, it's a lot of digging that you need to do. And I think that's maybe what Kat is trying to get us to do is because, like I said, he said in that interview, 2024 will be the year the lies are exposed. So maybe, you know, he's throwing nuggets mm-hmm. and requiring us to do a little bit of digging to maybe. find out exactly what he's talking about to, to, to see what's true, what's real and what's fake. Um, Hold on, let me rephrase that before somebody in the comments go at my neck. It was co-produced by Steve Harvey. It was produced by Stan Lathan, who also produced Sanford and Son. So let me let me clear that up. Stan Lathan, yeah. Before y'all before y'all get the comments on my neck, real quick, let me clear yeah. that up. But um, I mean, but they're yeah. already gonna they're already gonna be in the comments, so it don't matter. Man. Yes, yeah, yeah, I already know, I already know. But yeah, but but to 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 give my closing statement on it, I he went just like D'Lo said, he went nuclear in this interview yeah. and he was saying a lot of different things that you can do research and find out find some truth in what he's saying but you also have to be you also be, have to be subjective about what he's saying as well and you know make you form your own opinion about what he's saying and i me me personally i'm on the side of he telling the truth because there's so many receipts out there that prove what he's saying and that mm-hmm. you can you can find so you can there's so many receipts that you can find some truth in what he's saying at least you know what I'm saying so right but he he just but he's never just like D'Lo said too earlier in the, in the segment he's never been known to be a liar I've never seen an instance as to where he lied I have seen a lot of instances where people have tried to lie on him and say that he was something that he really wasn't so he has well he does that to himself too a little bit to some degree too though how by the predicaments that he gets himself in um, mm-hmm. with the amounts of arrest that he has. I yeah. mean, I know that I know that that doesn't always tell the full story, mm-hmm. but how do you get in a predicament where you're fighting a 12 year old? True. How do you yeah, get I in agree. a predicament? Yeah. You know, so, and so that's, that's where it's like, again, I, I love Cat Williams. I, I don't want it to seem like I don't. Um, I think he's a intelligent, great comedian. But this is where the the conflict comes is when you see this portion of him, everything I just mentioned. But then he goes on a podcast club, Shay Shay, and just seems like based off what he says, tells the truth. It's just conflicting mm-hmm. because, you know, the image that we we have of Cat Williams, the comedian outside off the stage and the image that we have of him on the stage versus the image of all the people that he discussed other than a select few is 
it's conflicting. It's like, okay, you're saying this, but I know this about you off the stage. Mm -hmm. I know this about them on the stage and off the stage. It's just, it's just tough. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it is. It is. I agree. The, the question I got, I, the question that I left out of this with, though, um, and I, the, I don't care if this, we yeah, use the whole yeah, yeah, freaking show to talk about this. You got it. Um, about Cat Williams and everything he talked about. Why does it? See, I don't. I don't know much about other cultures. Mm -hmm. I do know black culture. Mm -hmm. I think I do anyway. <laughs> Why does it seem like we have to tear each other down? All that, the time. Yeah. Like it. It seems like everything. Every. Every industry or every aspect that black culture is in, we're butting heads with each other. Oh, you ain't this. I'm this. You know, we always putting each other against each other. And I know, mm -hmm. you know, capitalism, you know, it's competition and all that. So, you know, survival of the fittest. But everybody, all of our top leaders, all of our top entertainers, basketball players, other than the select few, always going at each other. And he said it best. All division divides. Mm -hmm. We're divided. Always. Mm -hmm. Why is that? It, it we, we we've talked about this a lot on this podcast where between relationships to business to sports to any all, a lot of all, all a lot of avenues in the black culture is divided and i don't understand why that is i don't i don't you rarely hear any other culture out there talking about the division within their within their their culture and their societies other than us. And it, it's, it's sad, man, because our culture, our heritage was the one we had to fight the most for. Mm -hmm. And we're not upholding that to the utmost degree, degree from what we had to fight for and the rights that we had to fight for and the equality we had to fight for and things of that nature within our community. And we're continuously dividing ourselves and it's like crabs in a barrel, bro, all the time. It's always crabs in a barrel. And I don't I don't personally understand it. I and, don't get it. And and it's one of those things where if you if you look at I, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this I'm not that I'm taking a stance on it, but I'm a, I'm gonna turn it into a different avenue with this. Is that if somebody was behind my back talking about me about something, I would defend myself too. And you could kind of look at what Cat Williams did as self-defense because I wouldn't mm -hmm. let nobody talk about me or you or anybody who I love behind their back without me responding to that. Like, oh, what the fuck is you talking about? That's my nigga. Like, nah, you're not going to talk about my boy in front of my face behind his back and not get a response from me. So explain yourself type shit. So if, if I was if I was getting bashed. In the in the in society and on social media in the in the in the industry and I and I'm I'm not going to defend myself. That's crazy. But at the same time, you can look at it as what you said. Why is another black a, a black man pulling another black man down? But it's and I, I'm not even saying it. I'm not even saying it like that specifically, right? I'm just mm -hmm. saying why is it at every turn in every industry that we are involved in do the majority of those at the top in the black community have to be butting heads. So, and the mm -hmm. reason I asked that is because I was in a, I had a conversation with my best, or one of, another one of my best friends um, about what we need to do in the black community to, to change things. Mm -hmm. And the thing that he said was the people at the top, the, the blacks at the top that, that make all the money need to collaborate and get together and do this and that. First thing I said was, well, we don't, the white community don't ask or any other community doesn't ask their top entertainers, their top earners to pull together stuff and create stuff. They have it as a whole, right? They, they own the majority of stuff in America. They, you know, they can, they are set their net worth is seventy thousand dollars richer than those in the black community. So they can, as a whole community, pull their money together and just do better. But we ask our entertainers to put their money 
in to make it better for the, for the black community. However, everybody is butting heads and and don't want to collaborate. And when they do collaborate, at the last minute, something falls apart because some some random story comes out about whatever, and then now they're feuding. It's just it, to me, it's just tiring, man. Because it's yeah. obvious that our community needs to do better, but for whatever reason, for whatever reason, we don't do better because we can't come together as a unit to understand what it is that we need to do to get over. But you, so that's that's why I'm like, why do we always? Why but you is know, this but you know why though? The you know why though? Is because in our community, everything is. And this is just how I feel. This is my own opinion. In our community, yeah. everything is based off public perception. We care about what other people think about us. And if if I feel, and I, I don't personally give a fuck. I, I honestly don't care what y'all say to me in the comments. It just bothers me because I love this podcast so much. And y'all talking about the podcast. Y'all not talking about me. Y'all talking about us. You know what I'm saying? The podcast. So that's why it bothers me sometimes in the, in the, in the, in the comments. But regardless of that, a lot of, a lot of our people care. feel like we're coming together with a, with another black artist or another black comedian or actor or whatever and we're trying to collaborate and do something great if we feel slighted in some way by that person we're going to tell the world about it and see what the world thinks if they're going to be on our side or the other person's side the, that that that's that's what don't matter our opinion of what y'all do with y'all money and y'all's life and y'all's relationships and y'all's career that ain't got that ain't, that shouldn't be none of our business but social media has made it our business and our mm-hmm. people run to social media much more than the other people do i wouldn't say that but i, 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 I get you what you're saying well I, I guess i guess i can only talk because i'm honestly only in this culture right. so i don't know right i don't really know what the other culture is but with this podcast right. i have kind of opened myself up to other things and especially with the podcast page on our social media pages it's like i don't try, i try to i try to keep it away from a lot of black culture i try to bring in a lot of other things as well and i rarely see a lot of other cultures putting their personal business or their personal feuds on the internet they, we do it far more than they do. The other cultures do, mm-hmm. and it's it, and it's weird because it's the 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 idea of what per- public perception is about me. What do they? What does everybody? What does everybody think about me? Not what I and my partner or my or my business partner or my my teammate thinks about me. No, because that's the that's the personal relationship. But what does the world think about me? And I think that's what the issue is to me. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's just a question that I had. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The first thing I thought about after watching that interview, and but then also you said you did the research after researching, I'm like, dang, why is it, why do we always, yeah, why are we always divided? And why are it don't make sense to me either, individuals bro. always butting heads or going at each other in public? Like, I, I can understand behind the scenes, you know, you're going to have your spats. You're not going to get along with everybody. We understand that. Everybody's not for you. You're not for everybody. But mm-hmm. why do it in public? Like you like you said, okay, I mean, yeah, you, you did say it. Um, the, there's not on public display as often as it is in the black culture. And, I, I, and then maybe it's just because all I really know is the black culture for the mm-hmm. most part. Yeah, true. Um, and I, I don't really know of any other public disputes in other, in other cultures. And if they are, they're very far and few in between that, that I know. But it was just like, dang, like every, every, it seemed like every other month, every year for sure, you have some star button heads with another star, some feud going on between, some beef, some drama going on. It's like, when's enough enough? When can we come together and actually do something to change the trajectory of our culture? Because it's been projected within... The next 15 years or so, like I said, the average net worth for black America is, I think, $17,000, if that. And the Mm -hmm. average net worth for white America is Mm $75,000. It's been projected that that's going to be zero in the next 15 years for for black America. When, when, When can we change that? I don't, I don't know. Come together I don't to know when. That. I don't and know, I know how. we took a turn. It no, took a good. turn from talking about Cat Williams, but that was the thing I had, and that's that was spark my spark my. You know, that's why I was like, "Dang, we." Facts. 
Facts, man. So, sticks, man. <laughs> I've, I've ran into... So, I'm on YouTube quite often. Mm-hmm. Um, Likewise. Typically watching, typically watching, like, some type of sports, podcasts, or gaming, right? Mm-hmm. I ran across a video that I have never searched. Uh, don't know how it fell in. I fell into this algorithm, but I fell into this algorithm. So the video was titled, What is like being black in China? Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. It was a black passport, bro. You know what passport is. Yeah, yeah, I know what are, a passport right? bro is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. it, was, it was a black passport bro type video. Um, only thing is I think he was African or British or something because he didn't have an American accent, mm-hmm. but he could speak Mandarin or what we know as Chinese fluently. Mm-hmm. And it was, it, it blew my mind. I actually watched the whole video. I don't watch whole videos on YouTube, but it blew my mind because he was given the experience of what it's like being obviously black in China mm-hmm. and how we are treated in other countries. And so from that video, I started watching other passport type videos. And, and we, we, we are what we think of other countries and how they treat, you know, blacks and whatnot. In my opinion, based off of the videos that I watch is skewed. Like you would think like you got to watch it. Not, I wouldn't say watch it back, but Mm -hmm. you're going to be treated fairly similar to how you're treated here in America. Mm -hmm. Based off of what I saw, um, from these videos, that's not the case. Uh, I, I, I gotta, I gotta send you some videos so you can see. Okay. But my, my boy, the first one I watched the dude, like I say, he, he spoke fluent Mandarin. Mm-hmm. And so just off of him speaking f- fluent Mandarin, everybody flocked to him. Like he, you would think, you would think he was president Obama over there. Uh, <laughs> Got like you. with everybody trying to take pictures, just coming up to him, give him high fives and whatnot. So one of my goals has always been, uh, if you guys don't know, I've never been out the country all over the United Me either. States. Never Me out either. The country. One of, one of my goals is to travel. Mm-hmm. And, from looking at these videos, it gives me more confidence to travel. But one thing that I do know is that wherever I go, I have to at least be able to hold some type of conversation um, in the native, in the local language to make the experience be a little bit better. So my question to you is, have you ever seen any of these type of videos? And if not, would you be interested or or when you when you start traveling out of the country, do you think your experience will be heightened or or less heightened knowing um the local language? Um I don't so I have I have seen a couple of passport bros videos because of some of the some of the content, some of the channels that I watch is within that kind of so to speak red pill space. I don't necessarily take in the red pill persona or the the ideology of the red yeah. pill, blue pill, whatever. Uh, I just be wanting to see what the ideology is about so I can have more knowledge. But mm-hmm. I had, so I have seen some of these, these videos and the way that I perceive the ones that I've watched is the, it's such a different culture and such a different atmosphere over there because we're a first world country. Some of these countries are not necessarily as uh, as um, wor- as wealthy or as privileged as us. And mm. whenever these passport bros go over there and these Mandarin women, these Asian women, these Japanese women, wherever they're at, Philippines, wherever they are, these these the women see these men and it's like, Oh shit! This might be my ticket to get to motherfucking America. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's that's how it's that's how it's perceived by a lot of people in the community. But they all the the passport bros Definitely say saw that. that too though. I ain't gonna yeah lie. yeah yeah. You see what I'm saying? And the but the passport bros their idea is the Western women are doomed. The people in the Western mm-hmm. society, America, are doomed because it's it's so. You know it. it the the this the society and the stigma around America is that, you know, our society is 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 killing relationships. And they're trying to go 
to these different countries to find a woman who still has these um these uh traditional, traditional traits that's what i said thank you that's what i was looking for these traditional traits and a lot of the culture over in these other countries is very much traditional so they want to have that same traditional lifestyle but it's such a back and forth within that community that it's crazy so i have seen some of these videos and i do kind of understand what their premise is but at the same time just like Delo said a couple of times on the show you gotta know who you're dealing with Regardless if it's Western or Eastern or whatever the hell you want to call it, you got to know who you're dealing with and choose accordingly. Secondly, I don't think my experience would be heightened if I knew the the language or the culture. I just want to travel. Just like you said, I just want to travel. I don't care where I go yeah. or what I do. I've never been out the country. I've been to all 50 states and, and Puerto Rico. I have never been out the country, not even to Canada, never been out the country. So right. I want to travel or Mexico <laughs> or Mexico. <laughs> I haven't been out the country just, at all. Just all over. But yeah. yeah. Oh, oh you talking about going outside the country. Nah, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. I, yeah. I can't like, afford that. That's what I'm, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like I've had offers to go on different, go different places. Like, eh, I ain't got that kind of money right now. I need to make yeah. sure my daughter's straight or I'm straight, but or priorities yeah. are straight. Number one. But I don't think it'll enhance my my, but I, I would like to know some things to say. You know, what I'm saying like learn like, mm-hmm. a couple of things to say, but to learn to to, to speak it fluently, nah, I ain't got to do all that. <laughs> like I just want to yeah. go have fun and see what the culture is like, and you know, enjoy that time with people I love, or go over there with with, with my boy, you know, so with my lady or something, just yeah. to get out of the country. You know, what I'm saying just to do it. Yeah, you know, I I think I think it will enhance it just because you know you can kind of fully indulge yourself into the culture and, and true have a different experience. Um, you, and, and as far as the passport bros that you were mentioning, I, so I saw a few where it wasn't just, you know, those Asian countries, China, Japan, uh, Philippines, Thailand, so on and so forth. They, they had cats in, um, Brazil, you had cats in Romania, I think it was, okay. it was uh, Romania, and you know, just talking about those different codes. Now, the one that was in Romania, he didn't speak Romanian, mm-hmm. but he definitely was able to maneuver a little bit. And the treatment was different than I expected it to be. Mm-hmm. Um, it, no, no, actually, it was not. I take that back. His his treatment in Romania wasn't different, but it was kind of more like everything had to be hidden. Um, uh, so he was saying like he went to some parties where he was where he's trying to see if any of the Romanian women were interested in black guys. And um, they were, but not openly yet. It mm, was a few that were. Gotcha. But most of them know, you know, it had to be like. I forgot the exact phrase he used, but hidden was what I took away from it. Gotcha. Um, but I, I no, I, the only reason I, I say that is because it's not something that's typically in my algorithm. I don't go searching for that. I don't care to look for that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not interested in being a passport bro. I've been married for a little bit of time now. I'm not looking to get out of my marriage anytime soon. But it was just interesting to see. Or ever, like, for that matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, no time soon being ever could be no time soon yeah yeah, yeah but now yeah. <clears throat> but it's just interesting to see that type of content and you know understand where a lot of people come from but i will yeah. say this based off of what i saw i don't know how you feel about it but my take is western women y'all better get y'all stuff together because if too many cats start seeing this stuff and start doing the passport bro mm-hmm. especially with you know going all over the place um it could be you could be in some trouble. And, and it's, it's, already it's already it's already getting to that point though, D'Lo. It's already getting to that point yeah. to where especially when there are got, a lot of uh, women. It. Yeah, you go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially now we have confirmation of what Jamie Foxx said a couple years ago that and we and we knew well not a couple years ago, two decades ago we said with well, the women in Africa, some of the most beautiful in the world. You got Tyler over here, and you know who Tyler is. Yeah, I know how it is. Yeah, the, the the girl that sang that water song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. now you got her with the confirmation. It's like looking like Holly Berry. It's like, yeah, y'all better get our stuff together. Mm-hmm. It's already getting to that point to where a lot of the women in America, the Western women, are kind of bashing the passport bros because they going over there and bring. They, they, it's, it's it's a it's a huge feud within that community 
the the red yeah. pill space the the man the, they call it the manosphere the manosphere space it's a huge feud between them because it's like oh. why would we why would we deal with what we're dealing with over here when we can go to another country and get that traditional woman that we're looking for because they're not here no more. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I'm not familiar with the manosphere. Yeah, I, I'm familiar with it because, like I said, I, I take it in because it's a lot of ideologies. It's a lot of things that they say. I don't agree with the full ideology. I'm not red pill. Don't get don't yeah. don't kick my ass in the in the comments or whatever. Don't kick my ass. I'm not red pill. I can be red and blue at the same time because that's the type of nigga that yeah. I, I can be purple. Red and blue made purple. I can be purple nigga. But either way, does it? <laughs> I play. I play. No, no, I, play. No, no, no. <laughs> I could be red and blue at the same time because I know how to lead, but I also know when my when my lady might have a little bit more knowledge than I do in some areas. So I can right. defer to her too. I get that, but it's yeah. a lot of things that they say that it's like, okay, how do I feel? I just want to get a little bit more knowledge about relationships in general because I want to be the best man I can be for my lady. You know what I'm saying? And right. try not to, and try not right. to be as red pill as these motherfuckers some some of them are far extreme it's ridiculous what they say but either way it's it, it's already a few within that within that world between men and women and why passport bros even exist and it's it's funny it's funny mm. but uh, the other thing the other oh, thing ahead. i had was a survey was conducted by intelligent.com and hmm. they found that this year 45% of companies plan to remove the bachelor's degree requirement from certain positions. Are they are they enhancing it by saying you have to have a master's or are they just saying you have to have a They're high school education? It. It's, it's, they're, okay. it's not going to be required whatsoever. So I'm gotcha. conflicted on this because okay. I, I and you as well, were fortunate enough to have our degrees paid for us. Mm-hmm. So we don't have any debt. So I can understand not requiring a bachelor's degree or requiring people to go in debt just to obtain the job to survive. Mm-hmm. I understand that. But I'm going to sound like one of those get off my lawn guys right okay. now because okay. our up? generation, our generation really got it stuck to us. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because from about 1980 until just now, it was required that you go to school in order to obtain a decent paying job. They removed the industrial, they removed all of the factory jobs, put those offshore. And now in order to get a decent paying job to pay the bills, you had to go to school to have a bachelor's degree. And then even if you got a bachelor's degree, sometimes you wouldn't even get those jobs because after 2008, when the great recession hit, then they required you to have a master's degree to get a basic job. So you that required people to go more into debt. Mm-hmm. Now you're saying, that the generation before us got the positions that they got without having to get a, ma- a bachelor's degree. And then now they're above us. They don't know shit. We know more than <laughs> they do. And then now the generation below us is not going to have to have a bachelor's degree to be in certain positions that we had to have a bachelor's degree. were required to have a bachelor's degree to get in. Make it make sense. It's, it, it, it doesn't. To, 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 to be on your side with this, it doesn't. But if you listen to, if you listen to a lot of, I listen to a lot of different content, and I also listen to my daughter a lot. My daughter has no passion to go to college, no passion. I understand that she has no passion to go to college. So, and I think that's a lot of the next generation's mindset now is that they don't feel like they don't feel the urge or the need to go to college when they can just get a trade and make the same amount of money that these college motherfuckers are making. So that's, but but I do agree with you. That I think it's just uh, it's just we left holding the bag, bro. Huh? Our generation is left holding the bag. Well, our generation, our generation, yo, and, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but our generation, and again, we are fortunate. But I do have individuals that are around me that I know and love, mm-hmm. drowning in. I wouldn't say drowning, but they have mounds of debt because they wanted to go to school. In order to make a living for themselves, and the only way to to make that living, in order way to have that to get that degree to go to that school, they had to apply for these loans and these debts. Now, some of them will be forgiven by Joe Biden. We don't know for sure, but that's what has been said. Mm-hmm. But now they have to pay all the, pay all these these debts back, and that's taken away from the actual paycheck. The actual reason why they went to school, and I, is to I was about money. to, and I was about to agree with you. I do agree with you that it's bullshit that they're coming out this with this 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 rule now that they taking out the 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 
the bachelor's degree, you have to have a bachelor's degree to get these high paying jobs. I do think it's bullshit if in the future that these people without degrees get these jobs. Now, are they are they planning on moving? Because a, a lot of jobs now promote within, right? My, my mm-hmm. job at Enterprise, when I was at Enterprise, they promoted within. The job I have now, they promote within. So a lot of these jobs promote within. So if you can start, if they, if, if a lot of these companies are going to start saying, okay, if you don't have a degree, if you didn't go to college, you have to start from the bottom, work your way up, then cool. I can see that. That's that's different. But if, but yeah. if they're saying that, that you can come in without a degree and get a management position or a higher position without this degree, when this person that has been in this company for five years who has a degree and you're going to come in without the education that this person got and you're going to get this job. Now that's the bullshit. But a lot of these, a lot of these companies need to need to take, take that process of promoting within now, because there's a lot of people who in our generation do have degrees and people do still see the value of college. So people in, in their same age group in the next generation will probably have degrees. So a lot of these companies need to say, OK, we're going to start promoting within and opposed to hiring from the outside because somebody within our company might have the knowledge that that person outside don't have. So that's what I say would be the would be the the. the what? I'm fumbling on my words today. I don't know. How, I don't know what's going on. That, that would be the remediator. That were that would mediate a lot of the situation if they yeah. start promote within. I mean, the study did say did say that certain positions uh, would re- the bachelor's degree would be removed. So, I mean, that could very well be the case. Mm-hmm. But my question is for those individuals that are waiting tables that are doing jobs that they have no interest in doing, but they couldn't find a job that they wanted with the degree that they had Mm -hmm. or that they, um, that they went for, these are like high level degrees, master's degrees, so on. Do that. Are they now automatically qualified for those positions? According to the rule. Yeah. Removing that. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just like, it's, it's conflicting because I also am in the same boat. You don't need college. I believe for certain positions, Mm -hmm. the only reason you should go to college nowadays, in my opinion, is for these uh, specialized skill jobs. Doctor, doctor, uh, nurse, lawyer, so lawyer, to speak. yeah, mm-hmm. um, engineer, those type yeah. of where you, uh, those type of fields where you have to get specialized skills uh, and understanding of certain industries in order to get in it. But something like, no offense, I was in it too though. To be a salesperson, I don't need no fucking excuse my language. I don't need no bachelor's degree to learn to sell. I can Facts. learn on the job, or mm-hmm. I can I can take a, a skill or learn a, a get a certification of some sort yeah. in order to do that. But now you're just going to completely remove it, which, you know, Google, Microsoft, those type of companies, they've been doing it for the last couple of years and I've been raving about it. But I, to me, it's just like to do it widespread. And now that I really think about it and I'm getting a little bit older and we've put all of this time, blood, sweat and tears into these degrees um, mm-hmm. And then for you to tell a portion of our generation that even though you got those degrees, you're still not good enough to get the job. But now everybody's going to remove the um, the requirement to have a bachelor's degree. So everybody underneath you, you know, that doesn't have a degree, they can apply for these jobs. And I know it's a tricky spot for you because we've talked about uh, your situation with your daughter. Mm-hmm. but And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to deal with it at some point in time with either one of my kids. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, it's just like, man, I, I can't, I feel for the individuals that went the route that they had to go to get the degrees. And now all of a sudden they see it, they're seeing news mm-hmm. that, Oh, now you don't have to have a degree to get your foot in the door. When, when I was coming up, I had to have a degree to get my mm-hmm. foot in the door. Now I'm too old to get a position like this. I got too many responsibilities to get a position like this to get my foot in the door. <laughs> Facts. You know what I mean? Facts. So though. it's just like it's it's crazy. It it is, man. It does suck because, like you said, we were the ones left holding the bag. Because, like you said, the people before us didn't have to have degrees. They made it mandatory for us to have them. Generate Generation X. They, they made it. You know the 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 um. We're millennials. Bro. Millennials is what I meant to say. The millennials they made they made us it made it mandatory for us to have degrees for the past forty years, and now all of a sudden and now in twenty twenty four in most cases yeah now in twenty twenty four now you're taking that mandatory status away. So, but like you said, all of the factory jobs and the produ- the, the the production jobs are offshore now. So now you have you have 
nothing but these these jobs that are well sought after other than, you know, the ones like you said, serving and maybe retail and things like that. They might not be as sought after. But, bro, mm-hmm. like it, it, it is it is weird, but that's just the way society is trending these this next generation yeah. does not want to go to college they don't see or they don't they don't see a future in it mainly because everybody wants to go viral and wants to be um they want to be podcasters they want to be content creators they want to be instagram models they want to do only fans they want to do a lot of things that's going to get them money fast and no and you don't have to go to college for those things a lot there's a lot of jobs out there now that have been created because of social media that you don't have to go to college for So that's the way that's the way life. That's the way the world is trending. The college degree is not looked at the same as it was when we were coming up at all. Yeah, at all. I'd be interested. I'd be interested to see um, if there's going to be required, like if you're removing that bachelor's degree, what is the certificates? What is the skill set? What are the set of skills that you need to have in order to obtain that job. Because that job is going to have to tell you. How do you, how do you decipher that. from from now from here on? How do you decipher who is actually qualified for that job? And you know, I understand. I understand a lot of different cultures. Uh, again, we we can only speak for the black culture for the most part. Um, in the black culture, more black women have obtained degrees mm-hmm. than than men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so. Now that you have all of these qualified black women who still on paper, that's what they say on paper. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Still make less than most men, not in the, not in the black culture, but the average man, they make less. So mm-hmm. so now that this is gone. How do you determine who's the best qualified? They're going to have they're going to have to change. What, what set of skills are you going to put in place to say, all right, this is how you obtain this job? They're gonna have to put it, in or the do job. we just have a bunch of people that don't? I mean, and, and I'm not saying college or you said what? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, finish up. I miss you. I miss. What no, you go said. ahead, go ahead, finish up, finish up. You were making another point. All, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, I'm not saying that you can't learn outside of college. Mm-hmm. Definitely not saying that. I've learned a bunch of skills outside of school in the last two to three years that I would not have learned in school because I couldn't because they wanted me to be eligible air mm-hmm. quotes there yeah um you know we talked about this extensively so I, I wasn't able to do it but now i i know how to code a little bit um mm-hmm. they're still trying to learn a little bit more so i mean so you don't need college for all of that but what skill sets are gonna what skill sets or certificates or what what type of i don't know the exact word i'm trying to say here what type of qualifications uh, qualifications, requirements, prerequisites are you going to require in order for people to be in line for this job? Because if that, if that's the case, then anybody can apply for the job. Hey, you said no degree. I'm I'm applying for the job. But I that's mean, up that's up to the job. An interview, but still. That's up to that's up to the, the company. They're gonna have to put in their yeah. job description, this is what we require. This is the knowledge you have to have. But since you don't have yeah. to have a degree no more, you know, and even even in some of these damn jobs, even your degree, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes mo I would say some of the time. I go say most of the time. Some of the time, your degree don't need as long as you have a degree, you can get into any position. Exactly. You don't even have to That's have a degree true. within the field that you're trying to get into. I have a math degree. I how am I gonna get into law? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Or how am I gonna get into, you know, being an electrician or something like you know what I'm saying something like that or something to that effect. But the, it's up to the job now. If you ain't got to have a degree, yeah. you got to say you have to have these set of skills, this kind of certification, this technical, these type of technical background. You can have the, this up to the job now. Since you don't have the degree, the job is going to have to pinpoint exactly what they're looking for and make sure that they find the person that has all the technical skills that they need. So it ain't up to us. It's up to the job now. They're gonna have to say they it. sold us a dream. Yeah, they, well, they, they they, our, our generation, the millennials, they, 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 they definitely sold us a dream. They sold us a dream. We took, we took a, we took a brunt of what the new, the people coming up. We went through everything. We went through a depression. We went through technology. We went through internet. We went through having degrees. We went through, our generation went through all of this for y'all, we for the youngins, they, for the they, youngins. They sold us a dream, you got bro. It. Yeah, they did. They sold us a dream. Indeed. And now they're taking it away. Now, I wouldn't say taking it away, but they they taking that rug and taking our feet from under us. It's crazy, bro. Anyway. 
So it was one thing that I saw, man, and it, it, it kind of made me sad, bro. So the post that I saw says, imagine having a kid and you don't know if it's your husband's, his best friends or his teammates. This shit is depressing. So the story basically goes, and I'm going to tell you who the story is about here in a second. So this NBA star is married to his wife, and he's already suspecting that, you know, she's got something going on with a couple of his teammates. And one of these teammates being his be- one of his best friends. And the day after she gets pregnant and the day after she has the baby, this NBA star files for divorce. Because the baby comes out black. <laughs> I, you know, I think I heard this. This was uh, Brent Berry? No. So. Oh, okay. So. Was it part of the Spurs? No. Oh, okay. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Let me, let, me, let me build it up for you. Play, but let me build it up for you. And I'm going to ask you a question. So he files for divorce because the baby comes out black. Now, the person who he thought it was was the best friend. And teammate, teammate and best friend. But after doing a DNA test on the best friend, it wasn't his. It was the other teammate. (laughs) So this is the story of Steve Nash with the Phoenix Suns. With Leandro Barbosa and Jason Richardson. So Jason, Leandro Barbosa was the best friend who he suspected he had something going on with. And Leandro did confirm that he had something going on with Steve Nash's wife. But it wasn't Leandro Barbosa's baby. It was the unsuspecting teammate of Jason Richardson that was clapping his wife cheeks. D-Lo, how would you react in this situation here? So I believe the great poet Christopher Brown wrote a song. Christopher Brown. That said, said that these hoes these ain't loyal. <laughs> ain't loyal. Um, <clears throat> so how I would feel in this situation is fury. I think yeah. fury, furious and fury would be within my body. Like I, mm-hmm. I probably would be shaking. I'd be so furious. Yes. Um, at a multitude of things. One, my best friend. Really? My best friend. To the woman, my best friend. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. To my best friend. Really? My wife? My dude. <laughs> my wife? Really? To the other teammate. My wife? Really? To quote another great movie, White Man Can't Jump, I'm going to my gun. I'm going to my trunk. Get my gun. Come, come back. back. I'm shooting all of y'all. <laughs> yeah. Like, Come on, man. How how disrespectful is the wife and how disrespectful are the teammates? Like, I mean, listen, there are so many. I can't really I can't even really put into words how I would feel because I don't want to feel that feeling. Don't and, ever want to feel that I mean, feeling. I mean, I don't I don't think my wife would ever do anything like that. I don't think my lady um, would still, either. But still, to think about it, I, I'm. You get, I'm you getting get, a little antsy right you now. Get right. You get mad, it's, don't it's you? It's crazy. Your best friend. I don't know how long their friendship was. I would uh, Leandro Barbosa. Uh, I would and Steve Nash. I would imagine it was just when they were in Phoenix or whatever. I don't know because Leandro Barbosa is from Brazil, mm-hmm. right? Or, He's from Brazil, mm-hmm. right? He's from Brazil. Steve Nash is from Canada. I don't know how they would be friends before that, unless they went to college together. But <sighs> it would, man. I'm just thinking about you. I'm thinking about Mac. I'm thinking about my boy Kenny. Uh, I'm thinking about anybody that I consider my best friend. And and then just to think that they were in, they were having relations with my wife and then ended up having a child and try to put it off as mine. <laughs> how, how do you feel about this, bro? How do you feel about this? Bruh, I feel the same way as you, dog. If I if if this happened to me, if I if I already had speculation, like I had, because I'm not the type that's going honestly go looking for a lot of shit. If I have my feelings, right. I'm going to express them, and if and I'm gonna let karma play its way out. I'm not I'm not yes. that type of dude. You can call me naive if you want to. I let karma work its way because whatever's doing in, is done in the dark is going to eventually come to light, and that's what happened with Steve Nash and his wife. Th- that way, what she did in the dark 
came with a dark baby. <laughs> So, so, oh, wow. so, so, <laughs> so, but not one, I would be not one, not but one two. teammate, two teammates, and one of them being his and, best friend. And when does this happen? Like y'all got the same schedule, man. Listen, listen, bro. It, it's just, it, it was just insane. I didn't, they do basketball so, right. But I, I, I just saw the post and I just wanted to bring it up. I didn't see, I didn't go into detail to figure out how. The, the maneuvering that Leandro was doing to clap Steve Nash's wife cheeks, but or Jason Richardson was doing to clap Steve Nash's wife cheeks, but all I know is cheeks was getting clapped, and that was not Steve Nash, baby. And if it was me, I feel just like you. I'm gonna go to my trunk, get my gun, and when I come back, I'm shooting everybody. So this is true. Yeah, it's true. Yes. Okay. Because I, I'm gonna I'm 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 send, I'm I'm send it to you. Hold on. I'm gonna send it I to thought you. I heard of a <laughs> situation like this that happened on the Spurs, and it was with um, Brent Berry. You said it was it was Tony Parker. No, and that's why him. The other story too was um, the um, ooh, uh, 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 I'm at the, I can't think it's gonna it's gonna bother me, but it was um, Derek Fisher. And um, oh, what's, yeah, yeah, what's yeah, old yeah. boy? What's old boy? Um, Matt Barnes. Matt Barnes and his wife. Yeah, that happened too. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like yeah, a lot of stuff goes on in the league. That that, that, that nigga. <laughs> I would be pissed. I would be pissed. Yeah, but that's, again, that's crazy. That's I don't see. I don't bro. see. I don't see my lady doing this. I don't. I don't see your wife doing it. You know, what I'm saying me as a best friend, I couldn't. See, I couldn't pull myself to do it. Like that's my nigga. That you, his wife. You are my sister at this point. That's incest. I can't do this. Like, what are you talking about? That's like, crazy. It's insane. Like, what are you talking about? Like, but yeah, I just had. I, I just wanted to bring that. You are you researching the Brent Berry thing? I, I feel like you you did deep thought on that Brent Berry one. I'm looking <laughs> for it because I, I know it was Tony Parker. Okay, but I I can't. So yeah, it, Tony Parker was involved in something, but it might not be with a teammate. But I heard something about the the, the Spurs not too long ago. But I, we'll, you, we'll you, discuss got that. Got you. But uh, the next the next thing that I saw is kind of within that same realm, right? That's crazy. God so dang. on a uh, on a on a, a college a college football sports show, one of it, it's 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 four sports anchors on this show. Two white guys, two black guys. And I already know what you're about to say. The two, the two white guys and one of the black guys had on dark colored suits. And one of the black guys had on a, a light colored suit. And one of the joke, one of the, the the white anchors was like, Did you not get the memo today? That are kind of making a joke. And he was like, Well, as long as my wife takes me and tells me that I look good, it don't matter. And then one of the white anchors said, That's not the text she sent me last night. D Lo. And and not not to mention, they went to commercial break, and that white anchor that said that joke didn't come back after commercial break. But the other dude yeah, came. This, this is what's <laughs> happened last year, didn't it? Um, I don't know if it was last year or not. I just saw it come up on my feed. I hadn't seen it before, so I was like, "Oh yeah, this was this was last year. Just on Fox Sports." Um, and yeah. it was. I think it was. Um, he played. He was a tight end. The the black dude that handled the situation was a tight end mm-hmm. for the. Patriots, I want to say. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Can't See, remember his name, but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But so it, that's this is when you feel like your friendship is better than what it is, um, and locker room talk can lock locker room talk can freely, you know, go anywhere, even if it's on air. Yeah, I wouldn't have let that fly either. Nah, I, hell no. Nah. I would have handled exactly how old boy did. Is I would have. Yeah, we go to commercial break. Hey, you gotta see me about this, man. Nah, don't thanks. Come for a second. My don't, wife. don't say that about my wife. Don't be talking about me or my wife in that manner on air anymore. Like if we joking around, you know, and you let something slip off air, I might let it slide. But to be doing that type of stuff on, on air, air? you publicly disrespecting my wife. Uh, not just me, my wife. Mm-hmm. She's not here to defend herself, and I'm sure she's gonna feel some type of way about that. So. Let's go. Let's go holler about this real quick. Big facts, because and that, and that goes back to it. Regardless if it's locker room talk or jokes or not, I couldn't see myself disrespecting my teammates or my friend's wife. Like I don't know. Maybe yeah. maybe, maybe we just two different type of people. But I can't see myself 
me and you having jokes. Like, hey, what she told me last night. Like, I can't see myself yeah, that's doing crazy. that. That's insane. That's like, crazy. I don't, I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you like, said she- you, you can talk, you can, we can joke about my wife to a degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like but it, stuff that I might have told you that she, you know, doesn't do or does that drives me crazy or whatnot. But when you insinuate that y'all got some type of Sexual relationship, relationship yeah. Yo, y'all intimate? No, nah. You bro. can't make them jokes, nah, bro. Now you trying to start some shit in my house? Nah, facts, facts. And you and it's, it's it, it, there's nothing productive that's gonna come from that quote unquote joke. Cause yeah. shit, who knows? Old boy might have been on some Leandro Barbosa. You know. <laughs> you know what I mean? You he might have been on some that. Jason Richardson. You never know, but. It's, it's one of those things where, bro, like, I don't give a fuck how close we are. Don't talk about the people I love, bro, because I'm going to have to come yeah. see you. Whether it's my wife, right. my kid, my homeboy, whatever, I'm going to be like, oh, don't, don't talk about my motherfucking family like that. So I'm going to have to yeah. stand up for my family and, my, and the people that I love because I hold those things dear to my heart. Just like the podcast, I hold it dear to my heart. Don't talk about, don't talk about shit about this podcast. I'm going to come at your neck. Believe that. Right. But uh, the last thing that I had to D-Lo was Gilbert Arenas believes that Vince Carter was the biggest underachiever in NBA history. Said everything he needed to be great, he didn't do. How do you feel about this comment from, from Gilbert Arenas, bro? So so he he's referring to him not have. Does Vince Carter have a championship? That I didn't research. Let me see. I just brought what, it up as what? a quick a quick comment. Vince Carter was drafted, what, fourth overall, fifth overall? I'm looking it up right now. He was drafted fifth overall to the Golden that State I, Warriors and traded to Toronto. Right. I, I Him and Antoine Jameson were traded for each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I can't... I, I can't say that I agree with that statement. I think Vince Carter did exactly what he needed to do. Um, he had a lengthy career. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly where he falls on the all-time scoring record, but I know he went crazy when he was in Toronto and when he was and in New when Jersey. Move, and then he when he moved to New Jersey, he was going crazy. They went to the NBA championship. That's right. Him, Jay Kidd, and Jason Richardson mm-hmm. and Jason Collins went to the NBA championship. I don't know if they I, who they, I think they to? lost. That then they lost. That, well, they definitely well, lost. They, they, they did because he doesn't have the any. Lakers. Lose two. In the was finals. it the Lakers? I'm about to say, I'm about to see. Lose two in the finals. They lost to the Lakers. Yep. The Lakers. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, he he did exactly to me what he needed to. One slam dunk contest. Boy, they actually, out went the back, the they actually went to the back to back finals and they lost to the Lakers the first time and the San Antonio Spurs the second time. So, I mean, he lost to dynasties. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, listen. Winning a championship, while we want to make it seem like it's hard, we always tout Michael Jordan being 6-0, talk about Bill Russell winning all those championships, the championships LeBron does not have, mm-hmm. um, the championships that Kobe has. Winning a championship is hard. It is. And so if we're if we're dotting or if we're putting a stamp on somebody being great and doing what they're supposed to do or achieving what they needed to do in order to be great in the NBA – on winning a championship or having an MVP, that's tough to that. Those are it is hard to do. That's to do, and so the reason I say I can't agree with Gilbert Arenas why he is very knowledgeable about basketball and mm-hmm. some of the takes that he gives is like it makes you think like does he really know what he's talking about? But when you do a little research, he has is some validity there. Mm-hmm. I I just this one I can't I can't give any credibility to because I think Vince Carter. Had a great career, amazing career. Um, I, I, I don't think he was. He said he was the greatest underachiever. He said he was the. He, it says Gilbert Arenas believes Vince Carter was the biggest underachiever. Everything he needed biggest, to be I great, he, he was, didn't do. I don't think he was the biggest underachiever. I don't think he was either. Um, because if that's the case, he would have been a bust. That that's the reason for a bust word, right? The the word a bust. Yeah. That's the reason for that. Right. He's not a he's not an underachiever. Man played in the league twenty one years, bro. There's no way right. he's going to be an underachiever. The, he, 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 won he? he won a dunk contest. He won a dunk contest. Probably one of the greatest dunk contests of all time. He 
whenever he ended up losing his athleticism towards the end of his career, which he could still dunk out, he still could jump out the gym, but he just wasn't the Vince Carter of Toronto Raptors. But he gained it in IQ and shooting. He ended up being a great shooter at the end of his career. So like he didn't, he didn't just because, and that's just like you said, bro, just because he didn't win a championship. This man is number 20 all time scoring list. Where's Gibbard Arenas? Man, let's not get into that. We're not doing that. We just you're right, talking about right, but right. each other. You know what? You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. We did talk about that. But he's no he's nowhere close to an underachiever, bro. He's going to he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. So if if you if you claim if you say a Hall of Famer underachieved, that's crazy to me. That is insane. You go this man went to back to back championships and lost to just like D Lo said, lost to dynasties, the Lakers and the Spurs in their primes. Like the whenever they were they whenever they were considered dynasties. Now, of course, after the Lakers and the Spurs went away, then that ended up being the Golden State Warriors, and they created their dynasty. But it's like, bro, what are you talking about, Gilbert Arenas? Like, ain't no way you saying that this man is a bust. That you're saying a bust because if you yeah. underachieve with the with the career that he had, that means you're saying he's a bust. And there's no way that Vince Carter is a bust, bro. No way. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I can't get on that bandwagon. Can't get with I, it. I think Vince Carter did exactly. Mm-hmm. What, I honestly think he overachieved because I don't think people thought. I thought people thought he was just, uh, you know, all he could do was jump. He was just an athletic player. Mm-hmm. But like you said, not only was he athletic, he was a scorer. His early years with the Raptors, and then some with. The, the, the Nets. Nets. And then as his athleticism start to leave him slightly, he turned into a jump shooter mm-hmm. and elongated his career. I um, Give it a validity. I can't see no validity in it either, bro. I just wanted to bring that up real quick, man, because I thought it was funny whenever I saw it. I was like, huh? Vince? Vince yeah. was an underachiever. Hello, but that's that. But that's right. the that's the power of the championship, bro. That's the power of MVPs. That's the power of these different things, and and that that kind of goes back, and I, I'll make this last point. That kind of goes back to what Cam Newton, Ryan Clark, and all those guys were saying a couple of weeks ago about there's people out here. I'm not saying to get Gilbert Arenas is not this, but there's people out here that put these these statuses and these these qualifications for what greatness is that have never played the game before. Never played the game, never been in that high pressure situation, don't know what it means to win a championship, don't know how hard it is to win a championship or an MVP. And you letting these people go on live television and give their opinion about what they've never done makes no sense. Makes no sense to me. Yeah. Makes no sense to me. So until you do it and see how hard it is to do it, you'll gain some understanding and a grasp of how difficult this shit is. And to say Vince is a bust, give it, you played the game, bro. You played the game. You played against Vince Carter. You know how nice he is. And you're going to say he underachieved? That's crazy. That's crazy to me, G. I mean, the only thing I would say that would even give it the slightest of validity is he probably should have won an MVP, especially how he was playing those couple of years in Toronto. But 99, who won the MVP 99? I'm about to go look real quick. I'm gonna look at I mean, why you got that. The, up. the the 99 to 2005 years when he was in Toronto, you got to think Jordan, Shaq, Carmelo won it. Uh, who? Most valuable player award in '99 was Carmelo. Carmelo, okay. And and they lost to the Bulls that year mm-hmm. in the finals. Mm-hmm. Um, 2000, you got to think uh, probably was it? who won in 2000. Two. That's the only thing. Is maybe he should have won at least one MVP. Shaq but, won in two thousand. He, was, he wasn't winning who? over. He wasn't winning over Shaq in two thousand. Yeah, Shaq was. This is when Shaq was dominant, and when he went with the Lakers, two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand three. They went on three peak those those years, right? Or was it oh one, oh two, oh three? Um. I, I, I know we get into the semantics one, but, of it, but, but no, no, probably, no, no, yeah. That's probably just. That's if if there's an argument that may be it is he probably should have won at least one MVP, but his career average he has two thousand two thousand one and two thousand two. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I mean, come on, man, you you talking and about the O two and, and the O two season is whenever they lost, whenever they beat the Nets that Vince Carter played for, and in the O three season the the Spurs, the next dynasty that came after the Lakers, beat the Nets in the in the back to back the back to back championship they went to. Yeah. So so. He's been to he's he's been to championships. He hasn't won an MVP, but he was in an era with some very dominant people. 
Carl Malone yeah, and his right was dominant. Carl Malone and his right was dominant. Shaq is 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 renowned as the most dominant NBA player ever. And then yeah. he went to championships and played against Tim Duncan, who was also dominant in his own right, and played against Shaq, who was the most dominant. Come on, bro. Like he was in an area where there was dominant, there, there were dominant franchises like the Lakers, like the Spurs, like the Utah Jazz. You know what I'm saying? Like at that time, they were dominant. Print franchise at the time. So, like, bro, like you can't sit here and say that 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 Vince Carter is nowhere close to underachieved in his career. He's been great. He's been great. Oh, yeah. He's been great, yeah. bro. But moving on from one NBA, one NBA topic to another one, man. Let's talk about KD, dog. Let's talk about KD. Because to me, he's whenever, whenever I whenever I suggested this segment, I asked you the question of is KD just as bad as James Harden? And the reason why I'm saying that is because it's came out recently and KD has debunked it saying that he revealed, you know, that he was upset with the, with the son saying that there's a lack of consistency and he just doesn't, there's no cohesiveness within the, within the, within the, the team. And there was rumors going around that he was trying to be traded or didn't want to be in Phoenix anymore. And we all know what happened in OKC when he went to Golden State, when he left Golden State, when he went to Brooklyn, and then how he ended up leaving Brooklyn and ended up being in Phoenix. But we also all know the story of James Harden, how he left OKC and went to Houston, how he left Houston and then went to Brooklyn, and how he left Brooklyn and then went to Philly. Now when he left Philly, then he gained out here in L.A. So my question was, is KD just as bad as James Harden? KD is nowhere near as bad as James Harden. Okay, tell me the why. Reason I tell you, the reason I tell you that he's nowhere near as bad as James Harden is because when he left OKC, his contract was up with OKC. True. He went to he went to Golden State and signed with Golden State. He wasn't traded. True. When he left Golden State, his contract was up with Golden State. He went and signed with the Nets. Now, the situation with the Nets is where you start to think, okay, there is something something up because – um, the whole situation happened with Kyrie and nobody in the organization was happy. The management wasn't happy. Kyrie wasn't happy. James Harden Kyrie wasn't, wasn't happy. happy. James Harden got traded from, he forced his way out. But because uh, the reason, because Kyrie wasn't happy or however he felt, uh, KD felt he was being treated, KD wasn't happy with the situation. And then he forced his way out, I guess, or maybe it was mutual. Nobody really knows, but it seems like KD forced his way out of the Nets to go to Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And he was traded to Phoenix, and um, the Phoenix got KD. Nets got a boatload of a players boatload of Phoenix. players and picks and all oh, kind and of picks stuff. and whatnot, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so, so now if he if he is to leave uh, Phoenix, he still has two years on his contract. So then you can start to say he's in the same boat as James Harden. But as of right now, I'm gonna say no. He is nowhere near <laughs> uh, the in the same boat as James Harden because James Harden literally forced his way out of of Houston, yep. the the um, Nets, and then also the 76ers. And so, and at one point in time, when the when the Clippers weren't playing right at the start when he first got there, it seemed like he was trying to leave there as well. But nah, I don't think KD is nowhere near. Um, as bad as James Harden, and I and I can I can see why you say that is because, you know, James Harden literally forces his way out. He whines and he cries and he don't come to practice and he holds out and he does all of these things to force the organ to number one put the organization in jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? As far as like losing money, losing games, yada yada yada, but. It, it forces them to say, you know what? I can't deal with this motherfucker. We got to let him go. We got to, we got to give him what he want. Cause he's not, he's going to just cry and pout and be like a little baby until he gets his way until he forces his way out. So he, so that's the James Harden effect. My thing with KD is though, like, why you got to tweet on your burner? Your fucking, this, you, why you got to go on your burner and tweet all this, all, all of your emotions, bro. And that's what get that's what, that's what gets me to say, this is kind of how he's like James Harden. James Harden is going to do it in public. He don't give a fuck. He's going to tell everybody that will listen why he mad and why he don't want to play. KD will do it in private and tweet on his burner and say, man, this shit ain't working, man. I'm, 
I'm a little frustrated with what's going on here. Everybody, you know, Bradley Bill can't get healthy and the team ain't playing well. We ain't got no supporting cast. The reason why y'all ain't got no supporting cast is because they got your ass. But either way, they could have gave up all the supporting cast. So he you. said he he actually did this on He a, did on it and then he did it. He did, he tweeted not 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 that he said all of those things, but this is just me speculating what his frustrations are, right? He tweeted that he was frustrated with the way things were going in in Phoenix and then deleted the post. Okay. So why are you, why do you go, every time somebody say something about you or you feel some type of way, you go on this quote unquote burner account that everybody knows is you, you go on this quote unquote burner account and start spe- spewing out all your emotions. That's what I'm saying. Like both of these motherfuckers are emotional as hell, especially James Harden. But KD, whenever whenever he don't like something, he go on that burner and he start talking, 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 and responding, responding, responding. I'm like, bro, just relax. Like you get, you, and that's why I was like, damn, this motherfucker still. He said what he didn't like in Brooklyn to force his way out and got traded within the contract. Then he ended, he ends up in Phoenix in a situation where he wanted to be. And now he frustrated with the shit. And now you crying again? Like, come on, bro. You acting like James Harden, cuz. That's why I said, that's why I said, I'm like, damn, bro. Like, this motherfucker sound like James Harden yeah. right now. Well, I mean, that that's just the NBA. That's just athletes now in general. Mm-hmm. Um, when you said that him and KD, James Harden and KD are emotional, that's just athletes in general. I mean, that's how a lot of them grew up, you know, mm-hmm. expressing, overly expressing. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, when we think about our top athletes we want them to be alphas we want them to always be masculine and to most of the world masculine is not overly expressing you know your feelings like mm-hmm, that mm-hmm, and so that's just that's just what he what he's doing um i think i also think you know even though we know it's a burner account for katie i i didn't even know this stemmed from his burner account but even though the majority of America or basketball world knows that it's Katie's burner account. That's how you can start a narrative that, you know, starts to snowball into getting things that you want without mm-hmm. you really even expressing it, you know, directly from your mouth. Right, right, it's right. Just, it's the same thing as if uh, Stephen A. Smith or somebody, w- it's, well, case in point, Stephen A. Smith has been saying for the last month or so, Clay Thompson to the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I guarantee you at trade deadline, it's going to be some serious conversations about how the Lakers can get Clay Thompson because the narrative has been spun. The narrative is out there. And so KD using this burner account to put this stuff out there is a way for him to control the narrative, but also kind of get what he wants without it really coming directly from his mouth. True. And, and it's just one of those things where, you know, there, there has been a narrative spun around to where, KD just don't want to be the main focus of a team. He always going to be the main focus. You know, man, he go to a team but, with LeBron uh, or, or go back with Steph Curry. And he still, which that I saw that as a possibility um, a couple of weeks ago. I don't think it's still there. With the Lakers? But, um, no, him going back to go to State. Go to State? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't matter. He's KD is one of the top. Five at 10, least. 15 players in, I'm talking about ever. Oh, got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ever. And and so it doesn't matter who he goes and teams up with. He's always going to be a focal point, the main guy on that team. He may share it, but he's, they're going to, it's going to be there. He's going to be with those. But the, the, the point I was trying to make was he doesn't want to be the sole focus. That's, that's the narrative. It's like he wants somebody on that team with him to be able to, help him with some of the offensive help. And right now he ain't really, he, you can say Devin Booker is helping him, but Devin Booker has, has felt fallen very much comfortable in that point guard role to where he's doing less scoring and more, more passing. And KD is carrying a lot of it. And he's saying that that's the reason why he said the thing, the, the thing, that's what people are saying, not that what he said, but that's why people are saying that he said that he needs a little bit more of a support. Uh, he has an underwhelming supporting cast because he's still, Carrying the weight, but that's who you are, though, KD. Like, just like D'Lo said, you're going to be the focal point of that team because you're one of the best players to ever pick up a fucking basketball. So if you're right. on that team, nigga, like, what do you what do you expect? Like, you you can go out there and give motherfucking thirty five every night if you want to. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you're gonna right. be that. You know, 
Devin Booker can give you 35, but he ain't going to be as effective as you would be in him doing something else, like passing the ball more to you, nigga. Like, on, like what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? But, I mean, it just, it just bothered me that a lot of these, some of these star players are just so, they don't, they, 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 they don't, they can't stick nothing out, bro. Like, they can't go through the growing pains of a situation. And they, when if it's something, the moment something goes wrong, they want to cry their way away from it. And it just kind of pisses me off sometimes. It's like, damn, so bro. my question, like, what do you mean? My question to you then is if, if LeBron leaves the Lakers, will you have, will you have that same sentiment? He won a championship. What do you mean? I'm just saying. He won a championship. He is to leave, though. He won a championship. He's he's stuck. He, and, he did win a championship. He, so he so and, and be, be, now they they're back at the bottom of hold the on, Western hold on, Conference. Hold on, hold on. You asked me the question. Let me answer the question. Okay. Yeah. Before they won that championship, I apologize. Before they won that championship, they were trash, and he's still mm-hmm. there, stuck it out. They won a championship. They gave up some players. Went to the playoffs, went to the final. LeBron's situation with the Lakers is totally different from this first year with fucking KD, and he already talked about wanting to wanting to be up out of there and showing his frustration with the team. LeBron started first, with nothing. It's the second year, isn't it? Yes, it is the second, second year. Right. year I'm sorry. Right. You're right. You're right. He is the second year. Yeah. LeBron start and he, he came to the after they went to the finals. So right. <laughs> it's funny because this seems like a Golden State Warrior situation. Like he went to a team that won a championship and then came and whatever. But LeBron's situation was he came to the Lakers whenever they were trash, trash, and they trash. were trash the first year, the first couple of years, if I'm not mistaken. They 2020 they comes really, around. They really weren't trash. If he didn't get hurt, they would have been very true. They would have been. They would have been formidable. They would have been formidable because they were balling before he got hurt. Mm-hmm. So he got hurt. They didn't play well that first year. Go into 2020, they win the championship in the bubble. And then they've been having success, making it to the playoffs and made it back to a Western Conference Finals last year. So LeBron's situation is a little different from KD because KD, this is his second year. He's already expressing frustration when LeBron has been there four years now. So I'm just saying, I, I, I was just saying, because LeBron, no, you know, you already know how I feel. About yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Bron has been on, will have been on multiple, well, he has been on multiple yeah. teams um, in his career. And probably will be on a fifth team, right? Yeah, well, fourth team, but he went back to Cleveland, possibly when Bronny or Bryce um, entered the draft. Mm -hmm. But see, that's the thing, though, D-Lo, like, he was with, so if you can put it this way, LeBron has given you more with every team that he's been in than KD has, except except for the Oklahoma City Thunder. He was there for a while. But, okay, when he got into the league in 2003, he was with that Cleveland Cavaliers team that never put anything around. That that organization never helped him at all. He was there for seven seasons. Left, mm-hmm. went to Miami, won his two championships there, was there for four seasons. Left, went back to Cleveland, was there for another four seasons. You see what I'm saying? Like, you can't, you can't sit here and say LeBron would be in the same realm as KD with him leaving teams because – he stuck it out until he felt like, okay, the organization's not helping me. Let me go somewhere where I feel like the organization will. And that's what he did. So, okay. I, and I, I'm, not, I'm not arguing against that. Mm-hmm. All I'm saying is KD fulfilled his obligations just like LeBron did. Okay. Uh, for three of those teams. Okay. OKC, Golden or well, two of those teams, OKC and Golden State. Okay. Right. So if he, I know he's griping now via a burner account, but mm-hmm. if he is to fulfill his contract with Phoenix Suns mm-hmm. and then go to another team without winning a championship, mm-hmm. or let's say he does win a championship in that the next two years, mm-hmm. are we are we going to say the same thing about him as we do? Are we going to say the same thing about LeBron, who we know for sure if the Lakers not don't draft one of his kids? Well, I, t- I shouldn't say for sure, but it has been rumored that he's going to go try to go wherever his kid is, where Bronny is. Mm-hmm. So are we going to say the same thing about Bron, uh, about KD, a uh, Bron that we do KD? I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying this because I'm biased. I'm not saying this because I'm biased to LeBron. 
But I don't I don't think so because the world knows what Braun's plan is. He's not yeah. crying his way out of a situation. Well, in this situation, I would say, because it, people will say that he cried his way out of the first time in 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 Cleveland when he did the, the whole the whole the decision type shit. But he's not he, it, the whole world has known for the past three years that LeBron wants to play with Bronny. That LeBron possibly yeah. wants to play with Bryce. So the world knows this. They know what his plan is. So if he leaves and goes and goes to the team that that Bronny's playing for, everybody knew this for four years already. So that's a different yeah. situation. LeBron isn't going on the burner account saying, man, these motherfuckers ass, man. Fuck, fuck, fucking we don't know. True. True, true. We don't we don't know that. That's <laughs> we, we don't know. But then, <laughs> we don't know. But that, that there has been no report. Every time yeah. every time KD gets mad about something and then he goes on that motherfucker burner, everybody knows it's KD. And there's always been so many reports. That's 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 the thing about LeBron is like an anomaly because he's won championships. Yes, he's lost more than he's won. Of course, we all know that. He's won championships. He hasn't been in any problem with with the media. He hasn't been in any problem in his relationship, so we know. He hasn't had any transgressions with the law. He's such the model athlete that everybody wants to be that we that people try to find things to 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 darken that that light that he's that he has. And it's so crazy. Even we doing it. And I'm a LeBron fan. Like, I don't love the nigga. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, we trying to find something to say that this nigga has some kind of flaw. He can't be this right. goddamn perfect. You, we we know he do somewhere. Some, you it's know what I'm saying? Somewhere. Like, but 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 why does it have, but why does it have to be that though? Playing. You see what I'm saying? Like that goes back to your conversation we had about black people in the community. Why we gotta yeah. just think that he got something wrong with him? Why can't he just yeah. be that nigga? Well, because because he's human. You know, True, I mean? there, but, there is some there is a flaw in him somewhere. Now it's not. It, we're not. We're not trying to bring him down. True, true, we're true. No, saying, we're not true. That's we're true. just saying there is there is a flaw somewhere. For me, it's more so preparing myself, gearing myself up just in case something negative comes. Like, I mean, the man is human. He ain't perfect. So, you know, and I know we're talking about this segment was supposed to be about it Katie. Is, but it's still about Katie, yeah. Le- LeBron. But, like, the man is human. There is something that he has done that just hasn't come out yet. Or or maybe it has and we're just blind you know, to it. Blind to putting it. A, putting a mask you know to mean? it. So, yeah. But hopefully is hopefully what I'm what I'm hoping for, you know, LeBron, and this, I know this is a KD segment, but that everything in his sports and his relationship is what's perfect. Let's leave that where that's at. Right. Let, let, let it be somewhere else that he's not perfect at. But to your point though, I mean LeBron has been on multiple teams. He has, you know, fulfilled his contracts in every single situation that he was in. He's never left and no James Harden matter or no, you know what I'm saying? it. But KD is very, very close. If he does, like, like, like D'Lo said, if he does what, J- if he does with the Phoenix Suns this time, leave before his contract is up and force a trade, he's very close to doing being James Harden. I just wanted to ask the question because it was like, damn, this motherfucker is really sounding like James Harden right now with this whole situation with Phoenix. And he, at- my, my my problem is that you asking out a situation that you asked for. These are places that you wanted to be. Same thing with James Harden. Like you wanted to be traded. You got to the team that you wanted to go to with the with the pieces that you wanted to have, and you get mad and you cry and you bounce. Like why are you doing? Why are y'all? Why are you doing this? Like why can't you have the the tenacity to stick a situation out and live through the bad times? Why can't you do that? Mm. And and because we go we gonna roast them too much. But see, that, see that that's, that's where media, I come social in. Social media plays a, a a lot. It plays a big part in how players look at themselves. Whether whether they you want to just admit that. it You're or right. not, yeah. Whether they want to admit it or not, they 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 take social media as like, all right, this is what people think of me, and, and and that's why you have all the team hopping. That's why the ring is so important now because before before. Um, social media, it wasn't a big emphasis on having a championship. But then, you know, all of the the Twitter finger—I don't even know what I'm trying to say. All of the people on the social keyboard media warriors, come, the keyboard warriors, 
the, there you go, keyboard warriors or keyboard analysts, um, mm-hmm. they they want to say, oh well, he don't have a championship, he can't be this or he doesn't have that. So now it's like, oh well, man, listen, you're not. I'm a good player, I know I am, but you're not gonna say I'm not a good player because I didn't try to get to a championship or I didn't win a championship. So let me go to this team where mm-hmm. I feel like I could win a championship. Oh, it don't work here. Let me go to this team. And so now, now everybody's saying, oh man, you, this man hopping from team to team to team. Well, what do you want? Do you want me to win a championship so I can be a great player? Or do you want me to stay on one team and, and not be, you know, which is, you know, everybody committed Dame Dame Dollar for so long. But then it was like, all right, he got to go to another team. What do y'all want? Do y'all want the person to be loyal like a, a Jordan or LeBron? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Jordan or Kobe and win championships the hard way? Or do y'all want them just to win a championship? Make y'all mind up because it's not going to be that. Everybody can't be in the situations that Jordan was in where the team tried to build around him and had the pieces and they won championships. Three, two, three piece. Everybody can't be in a situation like Kobe where they were drafted to one of the most historical franchises there is in all the sports. And anybody and everybody wants to come to LA, even if they're not making top dollar, they want to come play in LA. And then you get the, one of the most dominant players ever, and you are one of the best players ever to play the game. That, that doesn't happen for everybody. True. So, I mean, come on. I, I know I got a little passion. Nah, you're good. Nah, you're good. But let, let me. But let me be, it's just be, like make y'all mind up, and and that's and I I can understand why athletes feel the way that they do nowadays because you on one end you telling me I got to have a championship to do this. On the other end, you are saying I can't hop from team to team to team. Okay. Well, I'm gonna do what I need to do. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And just let before y'all get in the comments and come attacking my homeboy. D'Lo knows that Kobe wasn't drafted to the Lakers. He was drafted to the Hornets and then traded to the Lakers. But I know he said that a second ago. But he know that. He know that. <laughs> he know. So don't, well, okay, don't attack my yeah. boy in the comments because somebody I'm gonna sorry. make that point. Yes. Oh yeah, Kobe was. You said Kobe was drafted to the Lakers, but he was actually drafted to the Hornets. We know. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Oh, and that's a great point. <laughs> I wonder how Kobe's career. I wonder how people would have felt about Kobe if he would have stayed, stayed with stayed Charlotte, with the Hornets. Who knows, bro? And not won as many championships as he did, but and, still and, being and the if, player if, that he if is. If Kobe would have did what LeBron did, would they still respect him the same way that they respect LeBron? Or if Kobe does, if Kobe would have did what KD is doing, would they still respect him the same way they respect Kobe? And, yeah. and you know, RIP to Mamba, but still at the same time, like would they still respect him yeah. the same way they respect KD? Would they treat him the same way they treat KD and LeBron? Like all these the the eye of public perception is so crazy to me because me personally, I don't care what you think about me i don't i'm gonna be who i am regardless of what you think or not i don't i honestly don't give a damn i don't care d you, you can you can you can you can say I, I honestly don't care i care what you think what people around me what people i love think but everybody on social media and the public i don't give a fuck what y'all think about me i honestly don't my only my only rebuttal to that is right now you don't care because you don't have Tons and tons of people atting you or saying stuff about you publicly. Now, let's say you were in a position, and I'm not saying I'm not saying that's going to change. But all I'm saying is, it's easy for us to say in our current situations that we don't care what people think about us, because realistically, it's probably only fifty at most people really care about what we're doing. Everybody else, they may they they may walk past us, give their judgment, and then after they leave, they ain't thinking two things about us. Um, but these individuals that we talking about are obviously constantly on people's mind and constantly having people talk about them on a day in and day out basis. So my only thing is, it's easy to say that now, but if you are in those positions, would you be saying the same thing? You probably would, but the, it's hard to fathom that you would not care about what people think because it goes from 50 to 50,000, possibly 50 more million. than that. That's, 50 me. You know 50 what I mean? Million. <laughs> 50 million. I'm insane. <laughs> but, but no, but like, you know I, mean? I think I think I would be, I think in that case, then to, to make your point, I would be okay with being a villain, honestly. I I, mm. I would be on those t. They would be in the locker room. I'm taking my shoes off. I don't care what they think. I don't. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I, I would. I would be okay with being a villain. I don't. I. I do not. Maybe that's just me. I don't. I don't. My, I don't want to be controversial in a lot of different ways. But at the same time, if something I say is that I feel and I'm passionate about that you don't like, I don't care that you don't like it. I don't. I honestly don't give a damn. And if you don't like me, I don't. I might want to know why. But if you don't like me, you just don't like me. Everybody don't like everybody. Right. I don't care. And if you don't like KD for what he's doing, then that's your opinion. 
But KD has, I guess he has his motives and what he want to do. So let him do what he do. That's what I say. But I don't give a damn. I don't give a fuck what you get right. about me. Shit. Okay. I mean, we 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 going on a little longer than I I thought we would go, but it's all good. Do you want to go with the other two? You want to just pick one? What, how you want to do that? We I think that'd be pretty quick. We can go with both. Okay. All right. So apparently, Florida State was <laughs> not supposed to be in the college football playoffs, and the committee got it right. So the Orange Bowl was very uneventful. Florida State got trounced. By Georgia, sixty-three to three, um, and it seemingly like Georgia stopped playing in the third quarter. Honestly, um, that's how bad it. They game probably got. could have scored a hundred on the boys. I ain't gonna. <laughs> honestly, they, they they probably could have. So this really realistically confirmed what the selection committee and most of America thought about Florida State being included in the playoffs. Sticks, what's your thought on this blowout and? Florida State not being in the ultimately the right decision being made with them not being in the college playoffs. So this is this is where I don't know I don't know if we if we are on separate I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you get your point out too. But this is where I might be different from a lot of people. Is the the senses around Florida State right now in 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 the world is that they didn't deserve to be there. That's where I'm different. That's why I differ because I still think the committee got it wrong based on what the metric is for people to make the college football playoff. I still think they got it wrong. I think they deserved to be in the final four and get beat by 60 by Michigan. That's what I think. That's what I think. They deserve to be in the CFP, the college football playoff, regardless if they was going to get beat by 60 by Michigan or not. They still deserve to be in the college football playoff. Now, does this prove that the committee got it right? Yes, but I still think they deserve their right based on what they did throughout the season, regardless if they lost Jordan Travis or not, regardless if they're the same team or not without him, regardless of the score of the Georgia game whenever they got beat 63-3. Bef- nobody knew they were going to get beat 63-3. Nobody knew that. They they had a thought that that Georgia was going to beat them, but they didn't think it was going to be about 60. Come on, like be real. Be fucking for real. Right. But – did they did, did did this prove that the committee is a little bit smarter than we think they are? Yeah, it does. It, it does. And the Alabama Michigan game was a really good game. Came down to the last play of the game, and it was a good game. It was a really really good game. And that game was more exciting to watch than what would have been Florida State Michigan. It would have. It is. It would have been. So, but did they deserve to go get beat by sixty by Michigan? Me, I believe one hundred percent yes, because they did everything they're supposed to do to make it. What you think, D'Lo? So when we originally discussed this, I said that I did not like the reasoning for why Florida mm-hmm. State was not included in the college football playoffs because one player was no longer a part of the team. Mm-hmm. You decide that they weren't the same team that they were all year. However, I felt like they probably got it right. Yeah, you did say that. And mm-hmm. and I, to me, this kind of <laughs> proves it, but yeah. I do feel like I do feel like there are a lot of factors that played into the reason the score the way it was. But my reason for why I felt like Florida, uh, the selection committee got it right is because while, you know, I'm ACC through and through, Mm -hmm. you know, we live in ACC country over here in in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't feel like the ACC was a very strong conference this year. I felt like they were probably the Fifth best conference, fourth in the power best five. Yes, yeah. there is. Mm-hmm. So out of, out of the five that usually go to the college playoffs, ACC may be at the bottom when it comes to those those teams. And case in point, I don't think we did that well in the the bowls this year. And so the fact that the ACC wasn't as strong as they were, um, even though Florida State went undefeated in the conference, even though they beat two SEC teams, one of those teams being LSU who was, I think they finished like seventh in or something, seven through 10, they finished in the standings. Even though they beat those teams, I just feel like Florida State wasn't a strong team altogether. So even if Jordan Travis was there, I didn't feel like they were top four team in in the country. So that made me feel like the selection committee probably got it right, but I hated the reason that they gave is oh because they're missing one player is they don't deserve to go. That's BS to me. Now in Florida State's defense, 
the reason the score is the way it was is because they did not have 23 players on that roster. 14 of them were in the transfer portal. Nine of them declared for the NFL draft. And so oh, um, see, that's the part I didn't and see. So you, you had you had nine to twelve players that were a part of your first team that were not playing in the game. Fifty three percent of your receiving production was not playing in the game. Your first and second quarterbacks were not playing in the game. Your starting running back and a couple of your defensive players were not playing in the game. So you have basically freshmen and sophomore playing against. The first team of Georgia, Georgia. <laughs> um, and and Georgia has a lot of NFL prospects on their team. Mm-hmm. Now they also did have a bunch of, um, they also had I think fourteen or so individuals that entered the transfer portal. None of them were their starters. So you know you take any you take any second team versus any first team, and that's going to be a drastic difference. Hundred um, percent. Is it a sixty point difference? Maybe not. But, you know, Georgia is Georgia. They've won two back-to-back championships. They recruit like crazy. They have a a roster full of four and five stars. Florida State is just now getting back to the Florida State of the 90s, early, very early 2000s. Um, So they're starting to recruit. But you take the production that they lost to the team, it's going to be a pretty ugly game for them as well. So, I mean, in in Florida State's defense, it did look bad. Um, but it looked bad because they didn't have the roster that they had complete. They had a completely different roster than what they had in the regular season rather than just missing one player. So while they probably were still projected to lose, they weren't projected to lose by this much. But if you decimate the roster, then it's, you're going to get the results you're going to get. Last thing I'll say, and mm-hmm. then I'll turn it back over to you, is the NCAA has to do something about the transfer portal opening up in the middle of bowl season. Make it after the damn season. Why why you got to have the bowl the transfer portal open during the bowl season? The most when, important games of the year most like basically. Yeah, some of the most important games of the year. I mean, <clears throat> you you don't have you're going to miss you're going to take key players that are trying to now we know get tons and tons of money in the NIL deals by transferring or just get to a better situation. You're going to open that up to them You're and not penalize. I don't know, man. I, I feel like players should be penalized to some degree for turning their back on their teammates and not completing the season. We always talk about finish what you started mm-hmm. when they're young and, and, you know, when you're grooming them to be what they want to be while you're on their team. However, you reward them for leaving the team and not finishing the season completely. To me, that's that's whack. Incidentally, it has to do something about that. It, the, and the transfer portal opens up for basically a month from December to, December 4th to January 2nd is whenever the, the transfer portal opens up. And that's basically bowl season. That's pretty much um, conference championships and bowl season. That's whenever the, the the transfer portal opens up, and it's whack, bro. Because that if if you're if you're not even thinking about being on that team for that for those important games, then you're not even gonna want to play in the game. And that's exactly what happened to Florida State. Now, to make D'Lo's point, the ACC this year in bowl games they went five and five in the in, in bowl okay, games. So this year. Oh no, I'm sorry, six six and six, six and six, six and six. They went six and six, okay. but it's like. What were the other conferences' records? Um, the Pac-12 is five and three. The Big Twelve is mm-hmm. five and four. SEC five and four. Big Ten five and four. ACC six and six. Conference USA and two we and had two. Twelve teams. Twelve in, teams in bowls this year. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. American three and three. Mountain West three and four. Sun Belt five and seven. And then the MAC was two and four. So the best okay. win percentage was Pac-12 at five and three. Got it. And, and they said the Pac-12 was project is it was the best conference this year. They did, they did, they did. And bro, it's it it's, it's prior it's just, to bowl season. Yeah, it's just it's just it's just crazy to me that how how it played out to make the committee look so great. <laughs> but you made a huge right. point though. You made a huge point. Two points that you made was that the ACC wasn't a strong conference this year, even with Florida State going undefeated. And if you lose 23 players, 23 or 24, you said 23, right? 23. If you lose 23 of your best players to transfer portal and draft eligibility, 
then you're not going to be the same team. Regardless if you had re, re, Jordan Travis alone, don't even not even Jordan right. Travis, Jordan Travis alone, you lost Jordan Travis, and that's the reason why y'all said that they didn't deserve to be in the college football playoff. But then they then leading up to that bowl game with Georgia, they lose twenty three more players, some of their best players on their team. That's giving hell, right. hella production to that team, and you think you're gonna go in there and and compete with a SEC Georgia team that just won two back to back championships? Hello. So yeah, right. nah. It's just funny how it worked out. I still believe that they deserve to be in there and then get beat by Michigan, regardless of what the price would the because if they would have gotten to the college football, and this is just my opinion, my theory, if they would have gotten into the CFP and had a chance to play for the play for the, the national championship, those twenty three players that didn't play would have played. Oh no doubt, no doubt they no would have well, played at least at least those nine at least those nine that declared for the draft those fourteen that said would well, they go into the transfer portal they probably still would have left but you you still would have those nine at least I still think that opinion. the fourteen that went to the portal would have stayed. Well, I mean, yeah, that's true. You see what I'm saying? Like the 14 that went to the portal, they wouldn't have a reason to go into the portal because they didn't get snubbed to the to the CFP. Right. So now they have something more to play for. They have a chance to go play for a national championship. So yeah. the committee is the reason why those 23 people didn't play in that game against Georgia. Because they didn't because yeah. th- those players felt like they didn't have nothing else to play for. So let me go find a better situation or let me go to the NFL since I'm not playing for this national championship no more. Even though we deserve to be there, damn, it's been every every week. Even though we deserve to be there, they didn't give us the opportunity. So, yeah, why sh- why should I be here? But if they go into the, to, if they end up number four and go play against Michigan, they got everything to play for at that point. So then the twenty three stay and they play. But yeah. I just thought it was a great topic to have because damn, they got they they got trounced, bro. They got sixty yeah, points was, in a bowl it was, game. It was not pretty. It was not pretty. not pretty. They had forty points in the first half. That is ridiculous, bro. They wasn't it was it forty to zero? I won it. Was it forty to three? I can't yeah, I believe. I, th- I think Florida State only points was in the first half. It was insane. But to move on to the last topic of the day, D'Lo, Lamar Jackson has been playing amazingly. He's been playing amazingly, bro. Leading into this this playoff stretch that they got going on, but he for the season as of right now has thirty six seventy eight yards, twenty four touchdowns and seven interceptions passing but also has 821 yards rushing and five touchdowns on that side so he has 30 almost 30 total touchdowns and seven interceptions bro there has uh, throughout the entire really throughout his whole career honestly but throughout the entire season they were saying that Lamar Jackson isn't worth the money he's not doing everything he needs to do to deserve that contract that he's got he's not putting it all on the field for his team but come to find out Going to the last season, the last week of the year this year, the last week of the season this year, he's now the front runner of the MVP race. So, D'Lo, how do you feel about all these people doubting Lamar Jackson and all he keep doing is proving them wrong? I, I love the confidence that Lamar Jackson has in himself and those that are around him. Um, if we recall, it wasn't the agent that got him the contract that he got. It was himself and his mom. And his mother, yep. Um, so when you say betting on yourself, that's truly betting on yourself. He did everything himself. Um, as far as the people saying that he isn't worth or he hasn't been producing for the contract that he's gotten, it's a couple of people, other individuals that got big contracts that didn't produce this year. Uh, I think Justin Herbert was one. Justin Herbert. Um, so, But you don't hear anybody say anything about that. Nope. It's because... Uh, it's because of the type of quarterback that Lamar Jackson is. Uh-huh. He's not the prototypical quarterback. Uh, he's, he's he doesn't have the how tall is Lamar Jackson? What six one? Six one, six, six two, two, something like that. Yep. Um. So you know he, he's just he's just not the prototypical quarterback. Um, six you know, two, two twelve. Yep. Six two. Okay. So he he does have the the height, but when he came into the league. He wasn't seen as a passer. He was seen as a, a running quarterback. They wanted to put him at receiver yep. or running back. He respectfully declined. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's I'm glad that he was able to be in this position that he's in right now and where he is the front runner to win the MVP again because mm-hmm. uh, he won it before. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the MVP before. I just – I hope he's able to – also produce in the playoffs because I don't think he's won a playoff game yet. So if he's able to to 
put a stamp on this season. Hope he's able to do well in the playoffs and, and the Baltimore Ravens are able to win a playoff game. And then, yeah, you, it's nothing else anybody can tell him. I, I was watching Cam Newton mm-hmm. on his fourth and one. Uh, I don't know if that's a podcast or it's just a spinoff of his Cam Newton podcast or whatever. Mm-hmm. But he was saying how when he signed with Carolina for $100 million I saw at that. the time was mm-hmm. one of the richest contracts. He said he Carolina actually got away. Got a got discount. Yeah. Because they got a discount because had he waited and signed the year after they went to the Super Bowl, he said that it had been so much that the the Panthers would they'd have been so far in the hole with the amount of pros uh, not prospects, amount of players that they were able to bring around him and so on and so forth. So I feel like the same thing could be true with uh with the Baltimore Ravens. You know, they got a discount for Lamar Jackson and if he's able to not only win the MVP this year but also win the Super Bowl or go to the Super Bowl then you know you make the management look like they got a steal because mm-hmm. that's what it's going to look like he he not only lived up to his contract in the year that he signed the contract but he also, you know, won you a Super Bowl or got you to the Super Bowl where I think the Ravens, they've only won one, but they were the Colts before. So I don't I don't know if that all that history comes over with them as well or does that go back to the Indianapolis Colts? I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like you said, he 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 won the MVP before he won it in 2019, I believe. Um, and yeah, he was the youngest like MVP to ever win the, the, the award and he's looking to win it a second time. And number one, I want to say shout out to Lamar, man. His birthday is actually tomorrow, uh, which is, okay. which is pretty dope, uh, January 7th. But I mean, it's it just, just like you said, man, it, it was, it's been reporters and draft analysts and Stephen A. Smith and, and, and Shannon Sharp and all of these analysts that, been going in on Lamar Jackson from the start of his career to this year and saying that not, he's not giving it his all. He's not worth the contract whenever they were having a stagnant season at the beginning. But then they ran off some crazy, they ran off a crazy stretch of games where they beat some really good teams, a lot of the San Francisco 49ers. You know, they beat, they beat a lot of really good teams within this stretch. And now all of a sudden. They just beat, who they just beat last week? They just beat, um, let's go look. Let's go look. Let's go look. Let's go look. The Chiefs, won't it? Was it? Was it the Chiefs? They just, yeah, they just, I think they just beat the Chiefs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure. It was a high caliber team. Oh, it was the Bills. The Chiefs or the Bills? One of the two. They beat, yeah, 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 yeah. They beat the Dolphins. They just beat the Dolphins 56 19. Oh, the Dolphins. Yes, damn. 56 19. 56 19. But the, the, Dolphins, week, yes. the, the week before that, they beat the Niners 33 19. So they've been beating yeah. the brace off some of the best teams in the NFC and the AFC. And not to mention, I saw this stat. Did you see the stat? The the his record against the NFC. What is it? No, I had in his NFC. career, Lamar Jackson is twenty and one against the NFC. Oh, okay, so, so I, if he make it to the Super Bowl, n- hello, <laughs> the NFC ain't had a. They have not had an answer for Lamar Jackson in his entire career. That he is twenty yeah. and one against the entire NFC. So if he makes it to the NFL, there's a sporting chance that he will most likely win it. But to the Super Bowl. To the yeah, what I say? You said to the NFL. Did I say that? Uh, was a, if he makes yeah, it to the, if he makes it to the, to the Super Bowl, players mess up. Yeah, yeah, players fuck up. But if he makes it to the Super Bowl, there's a sporting chance that he probably gonna win it, given the fact that he has he has only lost once in his entire career to the NFC. So that's crazy. I mean, it's 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 just one of those things where Lamar Jackson has like Dilo said, bet him bet against himself successfully so many times in his career, as well as beat the odds and what the naysayers have said about him within his entire career, man. And that's a, that's just a big that's a big shout out to Lamar, man. That's a big shout out to Lamar because you don't see that every single day, and you just play it cool, respectfully decline different shit that they you know and and bet on yourself and prove them wrong every time. Shout out to Lamar Jackson, man. Shout out to that, man. Yes, sir. We made it through, man. I mean, I thought I thought Cat Williams' segment was going to be a lot longer than what it was. It was long. <laughs> it was long. But I, it was I thought long. it was going to be a lot longer than what it was. Um, but we made it through, man. Talked about some some good topics this week. For sure. Um, like you said, this year started off with a bang, mainly because of Cat Williams and mm-hmm. the interview he did with Unc on uh, Club Shay Shay. 
for sure. That was released on January third. Mm-hmm. The year's just started, but I guarantee you, before you blink your eye, before you know it, we're gonna be talking about another year and ra- wrapping up the year. It's I guess because we're older now, like the the days go by super fast. I don't know what it is, man. It feel like I was just twenty five yesterday. If we being honest, bro. I re- bro, if now, it, I still remember the day I moved to Washington, bro. And it's about to be three years already in October, dog. It's yeah. insane. It's insane. Right. It feels weird, but yeah, I yeah. see what you mean, bro. Years be moving, G. Yeah, it's just, just be moving and stuff just be changing. Gravity taking over a lot of places. I promise you. Um. Anyway, episode 51 in a wrap. And, and is the, a wrap. In the books, bro. In the books, G. Yeah, man. Yeah. So we want to thank you all for tuning in to Too Complex. As always, remember life is too short and oftentimes complex. But when it becomes too complex, don't be afraid to lean on those that you love to help you find simplicity and balance in life. Stay prayed up in this crazy world. A few requests thrown above can return you peace and sanity. We want to thank you all for loving us and supporting this podcast. Even you haters out there. (laughs) Um, It means a lot to us. We're sending our love right back to you. Don't forget to subscribe on whatever podcast platform you listen to mm-hmm. and to follow us on all of your social media platforms. We're on YouTube, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. And as always, if it ain't too complex, it ain't complex at all. Until next time, we'll see you when we see you. Salute. Salute.